So day two continues at these 2023 Para Athletics World Championships. Day one had qualifiers and the opening ceremony, but this is the first full day of action in Paris at the Stade Charlotte. South Paris, the 13th arrondissement, the home of Paris FC and the Paris University Club and the Paris Volley Club as well. We've had nice crowds for the opening two days for last night's opening ceremony and a lot of the closing straight is well occupied as well. Paris 2023 it is. Good evening from Will Downing, from my long-standing colleague, Tolson Tollett, and the long-standing champion in the long jump, Steph Reed as well. It's a nice, calm evening here, unlike the baking few days of build-up that we have had in the French capital over the past few days. 11 titles to be decided in this opening day. 26 Celsius, so it's actually warmer now than it was earlier in the day. Nice calm breeze. It picked up a little bit towards the end of the opening morning session. Lovely crowd here. 100,000 tickets already sold. And you are welcome if you're somewhere near Paris to come along within a, a couple of hours flight even. So we've had four titles decided already this morning. Seven to be decided in the evening session. And we start off with a women's club throw. That's in F32. A couple of shot put finals. F55. The seated event. F37, which is coordination impairment. The T11 men's long jump. Complete visual impairment. Always very interesting. That couple of 100 meters heats. T38, T37 in coordination impairment. The first chunk of this evening for the finals to come. In T72, that's the race running, the frame running. In the men's and the women's 100 metres, that's going to round off a little bit later. And a very good evening to Tolson Tollett. Very good evening. Good night to her. Wake up. Already, Wake up. already worn out. Already worn out with this evening She's session about to, to get come, underway. Yeah. There's, there's, been some, there's been some great music. There's going to be some fantastic track and field in this session this evening as well. And we're really looking forward to it. Steph Reed, Steph Reed with us. Now, Steph, you've won a gold medal at a world championship. What does it take? And what will these athletes be going through looking ahead to this this evening? Well, it was actually quite exciting as we saw the men's T11 long jump come out. They got one of the biggest cheers from, from the crowd. This is an exciting event to watch. And so many challenges are thrown at these athletes at a world championships because not only for a long jump was a technical event, you have to really combine all of this incredible power and this precision. So it's not easy to do it. And, and in athletics, you have one shot every year to, to get it right on, on the day. So it's a lot of pressure. Now we're looking at the men's T11 long jump. You can see just there in, in the background, which is going to be one of the first events which takes place in the evening session. We have to name Lex Gillette. Now, he's been a bridesmaid when it comes to the Paralympics. Five times he's been a silver medalist. Yeah, he's won a few gold in world championships. What seems to be the difference between Paralympics and world championships for him? You know, that is a tough one. I had the opposite experience. I tended to be injured for a lot of world championships and happened to, to get it right at, at most of the, the Paralympic events. But athletics is one of those things where you have to arrive at the championships in, in perfect, perfect health, perfect form. The margins are, are so, so fine. And in long jump, there's not a whole lot of strategy. This really is just about perfection when it comes to that power and, and precision. And the reality is, is you, as much as you want to be able to, you can't control what anyone else does in the day. When you're on the long jump runway, it's just you. You are the only person you can affect. In 100 meters, you have that competition right beside you. But what we have seen from Lex is an incredible amount of consistency over the years. And actually, he has one of my all-time favorite taglines as an athlete. And he says, who needs sight when you have vision? Well, just let one, one hang for a moment. I think that's pretty good. Well, staying with the long jump, because the home favorite, Ronan Pellier, will be hoping to come up with something, the reigning European champion. So... Is there a possibility that we could get a, a home gold medal, perhaps causing an upset against the Chinese athletes and that man, Lex Gillette? I would love to hear the roar from the crowd if, if that happens. And 
particularly for the French athletes, they know they have a home Paralympics game coming up. It is a once in a lifetime opportunity and it takes a lot of factors that come together it's for you to have a home Paralympics in your generation as an athlete when you're peaking. And I actually, I had to look twice at, at Rona's age. And I don't normally bring age into, into athletics <laughs> because I was an older athlete as well, but 1970. It was a great year. Allegedly. Yeah, he's, oh, blimey. Well, that's what we were saying about the, uh, the T11. Uh, you just saw in training there. Uh, that might well be Chen, who's gone so far off the runway there, he collided with the table. That was astonishing. His guide, they're just doing practice jumps at the moment. All of the events that are on, there are a couple of seated uh, throwing events on right now too. There are 13 in this final. And uh, I hope it stays 13. That was... That was just extraordinary. We've got a couple of very good Chinese athletes in this. Cheng Wing Yu, Asian Games and World Championship silver medalist. Di Dong Dong as well, the reigning Paralympic champion. Ye Tao is the third Chinese athlete in there. I'm trying to work out who it was who ran in there, but that was an extraordinary moment. And you saw it yourselves right there, the warming up, and then suddenly just runs straight into the table. Remember, complete visual impairment. And the athletes are trustful of the guide and any little rustling around the crowd can put them off. And that's precisely what happened. That was unbelievable. Well, that was a, looked like a lower leg injury. I'm just having a look down at the moment. And he was holding his, his right ankle at the time. And you can see them just reaching down towards the, the bottom of his foot there. You can just see it hidden away. But gosh, that made a bang, didn't it? That was, was quite sobering to watch. We, we heard the noise from where, where we were, but again, that is these athletes are completely reliant on, on their guides, and in this case, they're listening for the voice or the clap, and, and that is what happens when it goes wrong. Well, this is what happened, and he veers away to the left-hand side, and he's told to slow down, and oh, good heavens. Well, he's just picked up a couple of those weights under the table that have clipped his ankle and then from there he's gone careering into the chairs as well and that's a well you don't like to see those type of things and I'd hasten to add we might not be seeing any more of him in this evening session that is a cruel way if it is to be that he bows out of these championships because that was well in fairness it could have been a lot worse if he'd have been another foot over to his left, he would have gone directly straight into the table with the box on top of it as well. That could have been really bad. That is Much worse than it was. Drama. Right at the start of this T11. The throwing events, they're still going through warm-ups. We'll see a lot of those later on. There are 13, 14 competitors in those. We do have a Chinese David on in this in the form of Ye Tao, the 25-year-old. Uh, Hopefully that's not a bad injury. It's a completely unexpected one. During competition, you expect it to happen, not during the warm-up. That is quite remarkable. Di Dong Dong, you can see there for China. Right in the middle, the reigning Paralympic champion. And here is the veteran, the reigning European champion, the Frenchman, Ronan Pallier, who's doing his warm-up right now and just run-throughs at the moment. But it's, it's quite something how his greatest triumphs have come basically past the age of 40 or 45. Well, it looks like he's putting his shoe back on and doing the lace back up and off we go again. Hopefully he'll be okay. So the shot put at 55 athletes being introduced right now. And this is a seated event and we have 12 in this. So this will take a while to run through.
Well, there are 12 going in this men's shot put F55 final. So we've already seen Ahmed Ben Muslev, Tunisia, Jakub Miroslav for Poland, Bren Enriquez of Mexico, Makafarov of Uzbekistan, Donatus Dunzes of Lithuania. Next up for Uzbekistan, this is Tolaboy Yuldashev. Manuel Souza for Brazil. Mikola Shabnak of Ukraine in this F-37 final. Shao Tejera, the Paralympic bronze medalist from Brazil. And for Canada, good to see David Bambrick here. Thomas Schubach of Poland. And last up, a man who we regularly see on the podium. It is Dimitris Silovs of Latvia. So this is the F-37 men's shot put, the second strongest nominally of the coordination impairment athletes. Well, a long jumper who picked up an injury looks like he's going to bring himself back and get himself involved in the action well the uh, practice jumps are going to continue for the time being right in front of him uh, that I think will delay the start of this event by the way it was due to start at uh, 645 French time and it's 637 now and those uh, Ambulance people who actually from a distance for lunch yesterday actually thought they were part of the Chilean team It's kind of a similar logo, but they're not they are the ambulance people and they are needed already That is really harsh sport can be very cruel Well the warmth are continuing as Chen Ying Yu takes a break, gets himself into a position to work out whether he can continue in this competition. Yeah, world silver last time out in Dubai. Asian Games silver last time out in Jakarta. That's extraordinary that one of the candidates for a medal should suffer a major mishap in the warm up. Oh, well, it's a little. <laughs> Don't want it to happen again. Good Spanish candidates in this. Martin Pareco, Maza, European silver. Juan Muna Martinez, European champion formerly. And uh, Eduardo Uceda, European bronze. That's quite sobering for the other competitors to, to watch that because they'll know what, what has happened. And it's just a reminder that this, this can be quite a dangerous event when, when it all goes wrong. And I think the disappointing thing to watch is the guy knew that he was going off and he, he was actually trying to get the athlete to stop. And, and it was just an unexpected obstacle that the athlete ran into. Well, he's, uh, he's needed quite a bit of attention, hasn't he, Chen? And the big question now for him is whether he feels in a position to continue. I'm not sure he is. Only he knows. I think it's such a hard call as an athlete to make because at the start of an event, you have all this adrenaline going through you. And, and sometimes when an injury like that happens, you don't always feel the extent of it. And you're wrestling with the fact that this is the moment you have been training for for the past several months and you have to make that call. Is it worth trying or is it better to take a rest and, and just accept this is not gonna be your day? This is the debutant, uh, Ye Tao, the 25 year old. He's getting ready for his warm up attempts. But uh, I mean, the fact that Chen has needed uh, a little bit of an ice pack there is, a very, very negative sign, Steph, I would have thought. 
Well, it's the thing he'll be thinking about as well is I, I think the call will depend on which foot he takes off from. If, if that's a takeoff foot, that is a lot of force to put through an ankle that you are not entirely confident in. But I applaud his efforts. You want to make sure that you've done everything that you can. Um, and if there's any way that you can compete safely as an athlete, I, I would take it. But you, you do have to be sensible. And that's why he has people around him to help him make that decision. Because the famous one, Tulson, it was you and Evan O'Hanlon uh, describing Lex Gillette's effort in uh, Doha in 2015. Yeah, that's it. It's, it's, isn't it the, the irony of us talking about Lex Gillette just before that injury actually occurred? Because that was in Doha eight years ago. And that time he went straight off the surface and land on, on the side. But here is the incident again with Chen. You just see there, he's just missed the edge of that table. Then he's just, you know, he's twisted his, he's actually twisted his right ankle under. So he's inverted his right ankle under and twisted it more than actually the impact of it. So the outside of his ankle that we see there is where the issue is going to be because once he's inverted it, in other words, he's pushed it to the outside, that's when the swelling will come in from there because he may have torn ligaments and really cause himself some mischief. But that you saw the, the ankle just twist underneath because being in that visually impaired category, he doesn't know where he is there. It gets to a position where it leans over, he loses control, and it just splices over that way, and then you end up tearing ligaments. So that could be something which may be a bit of a problem for him. And as Steph mentioned, if it's your takeoff foot, which it may not be, it may be his left foot he takes off from, but still... When you're coming up to that running point there and you're looking to take off, there's a lot of pressure that goes through your legs as you're getting ready for it, and he's still going to have to use that leg, so it's going to be really difficult for him. Let's go to the men's shot put, the F37 final, and Ahmed Ben Mosler of Tunisia. Opening exchanges of this coordination impairment event. Second strongest. Oh, look at that for an attempt. It's gone out towards 13 meters. 15.96 is lifetime best set earlier this year. He's got a nice amount behind that. To get the F37 final up and running. Just to get this competition underway, there's uh, 12 in it. And that's gone out to 14 metres, 0.15, and that's the lead. So the track action about to get underway. This is T38. This is the strongest of the nominally least impaired of the coordination impairment athletes. Two heats. In this T38, we've got some great champions going in this. The European Paralympic <laughs> Commonwealth champions, at the very least. European champion among those, Thomas Young, who we'll be seeing in the first of the two heats of the men's 100 metres. Paralympic champion he is as well. Uh, Jaden Blackwell, the United States in four. It's his championship debut, the 19-year-old from the Detroit area. In lane five for Colombia, championship debut for Santiago Solis. They always have colorful singlets. No change here. Ryan Medrano, the United States. He's been on Survivor USA. He's in lane six. Lives in El Paso in Texas now, originally from Savannah, Georgia, in lane seven. The Asian Games World and Paralympic silver medalist, Zhong Huang Hao. Silver in the long jump, by the way, in the Worlds back in 2017 in London and in lane eight for Thailand championship debut for Amon Tep Pompana. So it's the top three who will go through to the final plus the next two fastest out of this six. They've been getting ready for quite a while down there, actually. I think the commotion alongside them in the long jump pit has very much uh, been a distraction for them. The world record held by Hugh Janwen of China. The championship record by Evan O'Hanlon 10 years ago in Lyon.
There's where the long jump is happening. There's where the 100 metres is happening. They are happy neighbours. So this is a very, very talented field. Four championship debutants, but outside of that, a few medals. Particularly held by Thomas Young, the European and Paralympic champion. Born in Croydon, lives in uh, Shepshed, Charnwood AC. UK championships have been happening all weekend. Major deluge yesterday. Now the commentary teams there who were perched alongside the trackside had a bit of uh, squeegeeing to do afterwards. The umbrellas here so far have been to keep the sun off. Well, he knows he's the focus of attention at the moment, doesn't he, Thomas Young? A absolutely blasted onto the scene at the uh, Europeans in Berlin in 2018, winning the gold and the one and the two. Jaden Blackwell from Oak Park, Detroit. He was a, a decent high school footballer. Uh, I just read an article where his mother, Rochelle Davis, said he was just too nice for the sport. So track and field's perfect for him. And perhaps perfect for Santiago Solis as well. Nice to see him here, 24 years old, 11.34 is lifetime best set this year. Ryan Medrano, he survived on Survivor for quite a long time. I know that appears on TV in quite a few different countries. The US version of uh, same. Zhang Huang Hao. So Asian Games, silver in the long jump. And in the 400 meters in 2018. And a bronze in the one and the two, and Anamte Pompana in his major championship debut for Thailand. So you've had a good look at them all. So Thomas Young going in three, the European and Paralympic champion, the world championship silver medalist, and in lane seven, Zhong of China, the Asian Games world and Paralympic silver medalist the top three to go through to the final plus the next two fastest losers steph reed this will be an exciting test for for thomas young as you said this is the debut for Jaden blackwell and it's incredibly difficult to race an athlete whom you've only seen on time how how quick he is but this is what can happen sometimes athletes show up that you have never heard of at the championships so it's Young in three, Blackwell four, Solis five, Medrano six, Xiong seven, Pompana eight, the top three into the final. They've been down there for so long due to the drama elsewhere. But now they are away. It's a solid start by Solis in five. He's gone out brilliantly. Blackwell alongside him in four. Now Young's beginning to come up for Great Britain here. But look at this from Blackwell. So impressive. And he takes it. 10.85. Along with Young, along with Blackwell. That's a championship record. Taking the mark. Away from Evan O'Hanlon from 10 years ago. 10.85. Jaden Blackwell. He was fabulous on the football pitch, but he's even better on the track. So close between the other two. But Blackwell, Young and Solis all make their way into the decider. Championship record 10.87, and he won by a long way as well. That is quite a way to make your world championship debut with a world, champ with a world championship record. And that record stood for a long time. We don't normally see championship records last that long in, in Paris sport but that was a big statement right there well considering that the former now championship record holder goes in the next race he might have a statement or two that he wants to make himself but good heavens Jaden Blackwell it was a brilliant start by Solis and then just look at Blackwell go well in lane four powering through the 40 50 meter mark Young beginning to get his rhythm up but Blackwell had it all the way here you can really see the separation that happened around that 60 meter mark. It is one thing to start fast, and that's a great quality to have in 100 meters. But you have to keep building on that speed right to the end. And just look how smooth his action is there. 
Jaden Blackwell gets the win and for his friends and family back home, they'll be putting their hands up in Detroit. It was a really good start by him as well. And I have to say, Medrano pied quite strongly too. Uh, it's the two fastest losers to go through as well. They may come from this heat, but the winning margin was tremendous. It was about 0.4 in the end, and there was no stopping Jaden Blackwell. It is a, a lifetime best as well by 11 hundredths of a second. But he wins so impressively, 10.85. That's actually been rounded up, curiously, by 200s to 10.87. Lifetime best for Solis as well. Thomas Young in third spot. But how about that? Jaden Blackwell, 10.87, a championship record. He goes through along with Santiago Solis and Thomas Young, who will both be hoping to have something in reserve for the final. Medrano and Pampana are the men left waiting. Well, here comes the man who did hold the championship record, Evan O'Hanlon. In the middle of there, in the all green. What would he be thinking at the moment, Steph Reid? Well, you'd hope he'd be able to just focus on the race. Um, some athletes will pay attention to what has gone on ahead of them, some, some won't. But he, he's an experienced athlete. Chances are he's looked at the start list. He's had an idea of what might happen. He knows what he needs to do to get to the final. And right now, that is all that matters. Medals can't be won in this round, but they certainly can be lost if you don't find yourself in that final. Yes, it's all about getting through to the final. The top three will automatically go through no matter what their time is. Then we are looking at the next two best after that. So Evan O'Hanlon did have that championship record of 10.93. It's now 10.87. Said just a few moments ago by Jaden Blackwell of the USA. Fujian won the world record of 10.74. That may be under threat when it comes to the final. We shall see. Well, we certainly had some speed on the track already on this opening day of the full event here at the World Para Athletics Championships in Paris. Nick Mayhew. Has got himself a haircut since last we saw him. Interesting hairdo, that one. Perhaps it's aerodynamic for the man who picked up a goal in the 100 and 200 metres in the T37 category in Tokyo 2020. Evan O'Han looks focused, looks ready to go. The former championship record holder, twice a Paralympic champion. Jose Chassani from Mexico. Silver in the 400 metres in 2019. It's a 400 metre Paralympic champion. Dimitri Zosvitsky of France, the home favourite. Lifetime best set this year of 11.05. Beros of Cyprus. And Zhu Deng of the People's Republic of China, who took silver in Tokyo. He took gold in the 2019 championships in Dubai in the 100 and long jump. So Mayhew, O'Hanlon, Chisani, Josvitsky, Beros, and Zhu. Prepare to battle it out as the top three automatically qualify. And then all eyes will be on who the next best are to go through. Nick Mayhew, who's been a T37 athlete now, up against some stiff competition in the T38, had it all his own way in Tokyo. So Mayhew in three, O'Hanlon in four, Chisani in five, Josvitsky in six, Beros in seven, and Zhu in lane eight. And there was a slight movement there. I think it might have actually been Chisani of Mexico. And it's a full start to this second Who just made a very slight movement. Now, this is going to be an interesting one because he certainly moved. Now, whether he actually moved forward or his body just moved there, this will be interesting to see. I'm sure it was Chassani next to having a hand and look in the middle there. You'll see him there. He just made a slight move. Just saw it as they were getting ready. He just almost arched his back slightly. 
it will be interesting to see what happens here because actually in, in this category, the start information system isn't turned on. Normally you would have the pressure plates turned on and it would be done through equipment, but this is actually going to be a visual call by the head starting judge. Well, quite some call as well. He definitely twitched. Now, there are times in this category where they do allow for certain movements because of what it is. And he's been given the yellow card. And I think that's a, a fair indication of how things should have gone because he didn't actually break his blocks. He just almost arched his back and moved forward slightly. So he's been given a talking to. He's been given a warning. Evan, Evan O'Hanlon's questioning why perhaps it's only a yellow. Now, can that type of thing affect you? in that position if Evan O'Hanlon's worrying about stuff like that. Chisani's had a look at him. O'Hanlon's not happy. This is one of the elements of, of sprinting. You are with people and, and you have to be able to react to whatever happens. And, and actually, I think that Chisani has been given a favor because had that race gone ahead, he was trying to correct. He was moving backwards as the gun was going. He almost lost his balance completely, hadn't he? As in, he would have been taking off in a, in a position that wouldn't have been able for him to actually get any momentum there. All right, take two. Mayhew in three, O'Hanlon four, Chisani in five. Kozvitsky in six, Beros in seven, and Zhu in lane eight. Well, this time there's no problems at all, and they blast away, and O'Hanlon got away well. It's Mayhew on the inside, but roaring down the outside. That's Zhu Denning. That's Zhu who looks like he's going to take it. Mayhew in second, and O'Hanlon is going to come in in third place. And 11.08, so a much slower time by the winner there, Zhu Denning. The silver medalist in 2020 won the gold, the 100 and long jump in 2019 back in Dubai. And he roared down the outside there. Got off to a good start, all of them on that occasion. Two Mayhew seven. held his form as he went through in 11.03. And Evan O'Hanlon taking third place. But 11.08, the time there for Zhu Deneng. And after all the drama at the beginning, it may well have put Evan O'Hanlon off slightly, but he didn't get away to the greatest of stars. I'll let Mayhew got away quickest, and then Zhu just roared down the outside. It's actually really interesting to watch. At the start of the race, Zhu is actually the only competitor who chose not to use blocks. And in this category, it's not a requirement. Uh, we have a great close-up of him there. He's using a three-point crouch position. Uh, and again, the what you want to do is just figure out a way that works best for, for your body. And sometimes that movement of, of coming out of the blocks actually doesn't enhance what you're really trying to do, which is get as high, as high, as quick a velocity going down the track as possible. And perhaps because he was out in lane eight, he was kind of away from the drama. He could run his own race. And in that case, perhaps it worked in his favor. Well, season best for Zoo, 11.08, Mayhew in 11.15. And Evan O'Hanlon, a season best for him, despite finishing in third position there of 11.31. And Jodzwitski has also managed to qualify through from that race there. So Zhu, Mayhew and O'Hanlon, the three who automatically go through season best for both Zhu and O'Hanlon. And Jodzwitski, he qualifies in 11.34. Despite a season best, Beros, he goes out, as does Chisani. So quite some drama already on this evening session. We've only had two heats on the track already. We've had a championship record. We've had a debatable false start. You had drama in the warm-up for the T11 long jump for men. And it's all happening. And as you can see, the men's long jump T11, the introductions are only happening now, 15 minutes after the first jump was supposed to happen because of the accident for Chen Jingyu, who was uh, racing along and who uh, bumped in to that box by the table alongside the running track and he uh, went over his ankle as well. So 13 are down for the final. The 
is still there on his seat. And from what I can see, has not been introduced to the crowd. Steady as she goes. That is really unfortunate for Chen. We move on to the first heat of two in the men's 100 metres T37. This is the nominally second strongest of the four in terms of coordination impairment. Four in this, the top three will qualify for the final. Vladislav Sarabelny, the reigning European Paralympic champion of the long jump we've seen, Petrus Karoli of Namibia, Christian Luis de Costa, who was fourth in the last World Championships, and Sap Toyogo Purnomo of Indonesia, the reigning Asian Games champion, the World and Paralympics bronze medalist, are the four in this. So Sharon Belny in three, Kareli four, Christian Luis de Costa five, Sapchiogo Punomo of Indonesia in lane six, and the top three will make it through to the decider. Away first time, solid start by Zara Belny of Ukraine, no doubt about that in lane three, flying up is Punomo now of Indonesia, Punomo and Luis of Brazil, Sarah Belny, that's the one, two, three, and they've made their way through to the final quite effectively. 11.42, the unofficial time, which would be a championship record. 200s inside, that's been confirmed now, and Saptoyogo Podomo gets the championship record. The old mark held by Andrew Vadovin in Dubai of the RPC four years ago. They're not competing here. Bonamo certainly is, and he is right up for this. The Asian Games champion in the 100 and the 200, bronze in the Universal Relay for Indonesia in Jakarta five years ago. And what a start he flew off to as well, Steph. It was a great start. And for our audience members new to Parasport, T37 is a coordination impairment class. And in this case, it typically affects one side of the body. So you'll see when they're sprinting, they tend to have one stronger side. And it takes an incredible amount of core work to really balance out that stride. And you can see all different styles of running there all in one shot. And what you want to do is, is find a way to balance out your running so that you can carry on that velocity. And you can see he's slowing down there the line. So championship record, and, and we still have more to come in the final. Well, he does as well. His lifetime best is 11.31. It's uh, season's best for him, though, by 22 hundredths of a second. Very impressive. He has an ambition, long-term ambition, to run a motorcycle repair shop. He's from uh, Poro Kerto, coached by Slamet Wadodo and... Proadi Sunyoto, and they'll all be happy as team with what he's done there. Curly is the man who has to wait. A realization a bit late, maybe. Championship record it is by Bonomo, 11.42. And he joins Christian Luiz and Vladislav Zara Belny in the final of the men's 100 meters, T37. Nice crowd here, busy night in the field. We'll be dipping into that a lot more, but a couple of the finals having been delayed. Crowd have got a lot to follow this evening, no doubt about that. Two shot put finals currently on F55, which is seated category. F37 coordination impairment, as you'll well know from the past couple of minutes, plus that uh, T11 men's long jump final. Juan Muna Martinez has had a foul already for Spain. <laughs> Chen has been given the nod to compete. We will be seeing him shortly. But before that, we'll see the second heat. The men's 100 metres T37. Five to go in this one. As per heat one, the first three will automatically qualify. 
championship record already in the opening heats of the T38 and the T37 already this evening. There is Ricardo Gomez of Brazil. Bronze medalist in the 200 metres in Tokyo 2020. And, and Mikhail Kokotsky, he's a name we know well. Bronze in the European Championships in Berlin back in 2018. He was a bronze medalist in London in 2017, over 400 metres. He's multi-talented. He's won gold in the 200 and 400 also in 2018 in the Europeans. Trinesh Trevetti, 17 years of age, competing a lifetime best set this year. His first major championships coming into here, 12.13, his best to date. A couple of debutants in this one. Kokovsky on the inside in lane three. He's certainly no debutant. The man from Poland. Experienced athlete. He'll know what to do running on the inside there. All he needs to do is get through in that top three. Joe Smith of New Zealand making his debut in the major championships. Born in Leeds in the UK, relocated to Auckland at the age of nine. There is the man, 17, Trevetti of India. Turns 18 later this year, just before Christmas. Ricardo Gomez of Brazil, lifetime best of 11.05. Bronze in the 200 metres in Tokyo. And Ukraine's Mikola Reski. First major championships, 16 years of age. How would he be feeling? I bet he's going to be pretty nervous. But the thing is, sometimes youth can be an advantage because you have no idea what you're walking into. And it's wonderful and naive and you're free. At the same time, he is surrounded by some very fast men. Well, a championship record in the opening heat. Kotkowski will go in three. Smith of New Zealand will go in four. Trevetti of India in five. Gomez in six. And Reski of Ukraine will go in lane seven. The youngster. Away clean with no issues at all. And Gomez it is who gets away the fastest out there in lane six. He is absolutely flying at the moment. Smith is in second place, but he's being caught by the Indian. And Kokovsky on the inside, 11.26 is the time. He goes across in for Gomez of Brazil. That there a season best for him. 11.49 his best this season prior to that one there. So it's been rounded down to 11.25 for Gomez of Brazil. Kokovsky coming through to take second position. And then after that, we might be looking at a bit of a photo because Smith and Trevetti were very close to each other indeed. And it is Smith, the New Zealander, who takes third position just ahead of Trevetti of India. Well, Gomez has got away to an absolute flyer and he was already at the 30 metre mark or so, looking very solid, wasn't he? Gomez knew early on he was going to qualify. I think the real race is going on behind him because, as we know, only the top three are guaranteed a spot. And at the moment, we have nine athletes in the semifinals and only eight lanes available in the final. So there's going to be a few nervous athletes looking at their result. Nobody wants to be the one that doesn't come back. We should also make mention that not so much in the 100 metres, but as these races are, these categories are over a longer period, that tightness in the body can actually affect yes. athletes as they head towards those finishing lines. But in this one over the 100 metres, it's not too bad a situation. Smith there just getting ahead of Trevetti, the youngster from India. Smith at his first major championships as well. But there is the man Gomez. He had it all under control. He didn't look too happy with his time as he went across, but there's the photo 
right across the second, third, and there's Trevetti in fourth position. So no doubt about the winner there. And the young Ukrainian Reski coming home in fifth position in his first race of the major championships. Not for that man, though. He's through, he's calm, he's relaxed, and he's through to the final of the men's 100 meters T37. And Gomez, 11.25 there for him, actually breaking that championship record. So Kokovsky will go through in second. Smith, with an Oceania record, qualifies in third. And Trevetti and Reski also going through with lifetime bests. It's a fantastic race in the end, and, and again, it bodes well. We suspected from the heats this morning that we were on a fast track, and I think that number of PBs and area records confirms it. So the T11 men's long jump beginning to heat up. Just in the opening round. It's a great shot there just showing all of the action and actually how disciplined this crowd is going to have to be because you have the T11 long jump going on where they need complete silence for every attempt so that each athlete can hear the call of their guide and yet you have the 100 meters right beside them and they're wanting to cheer and you have the other field events going on as well. But they've been great so far and, and, and really getting involved and cheering when they can and staying silent when they need to. The event with 15 meters, 59, Armen Ben Mosla. Second in the event, Kudratilokon Murakuyashev with a personal best. We saw quite a few Danish fans in the crowd. And they've got somebody to look forward in this men's 100 meters T72 final. Now, this is a newly numbered category. It's previously been called race running, also known as frame running. These are athletes who need to run with what looks like a large bike, really, to, um, to keep upright. It's something that's been uh, quite prevalent in Scotland and Denmark in recent years, but the United States and Brazil have had entrants come in now that it's part of the Well Para Athletics in the family. Throw, F37, it's the final. We've got the European the and event World event Champions who are competing in this. It's a new championship record. Marwa Ibrahimi, second so far with 25 meters, 26, a personal best for Umayana. It's a great shot here. We get a look at and all the different the event, equipment meters, and the different setups 14. that the athletes are, are using. Now, in wheelchair the racing, to get it is illegal is for Muzikova your feet to touch Czechia. the ground, but not so in frame running. So this is an event for athletes who, who wouldn't perhaps have the coordination or the balance to, to run without assistance. But with a frame, we see a very different story, and we see just how rapid they are. Uh, so there's eight in this final. They've been uh, allocated numbers in the 70s. The uh, 60s for arm amputees, the 50s for wheelchair competitors, 40 and 41 short stature, the uh, 40s, other 40s now for uh, arm amputee athletes. So, the field for this men's 100 minutes T72 final. Championship debut for Michael Anwar of the United States. National record for the US of 20.02 set this year. He is a print shop owner, a former snowboarder based in Spokane in Washington. Anwar in lane one for the United States. Lane two, championship debut for Brazil, Vinicius Marquez. He's only 16 years old. Lane three for Great Britain, the reigning European champion, world championship silver medalist, Rafi Sulaiman. Lane four for Lithuania, championship debut for Arturis Podonovas. 18.37 is lifetime best set this year. Lane five, the fastest in the world this year, the world record holder, reigning world champion, 
and European champion from 2018 in Berlin, Gavin Drysdale. Lane 6 for Lithuania, a championship debut, 17.52 lifetime best set this year of Devidas Podobayevas. Lane 7 for Sweden, championship debut for the 16-year-old from Vasteras, Axel Kolling. 19.97, the lifetime best set this year. And in lane 8 for Denmark, European silver medalist two years ago in Bidgosh and in 2018 in Berlin, Lasse Kroma. And so Siddiqui is coach. And based in Odense. So Gavin Drysdale there for Great Britain. World champion and former European champion. Eight in this. Anwar in one. Marquez two. Slime in three. Plodonovas four. Drysdale five. Padapayeva six. Colling seven. And Kroman in lane eight. The final of the men's 100 metres. T72. <laughs> And they are away. Sliman and three, Drysdale and five. It could be a big British battle of this. Potapayevas has gone off really well for Lithuania as well. But it is between Sliman and Drysdale for Great Britain. Drysdale just marginally out in front. Sliman in second spot. Britain one and two, tied for third. Potapayevas might have just got there. Head of Vinicius Marcus of Brazil. But it is a Britain one, two. And Drysdale... The reigning world champion in ahead of the European champion, Rafi Salaiman. 16.66 the time. That's the fastest in the world this year. Really tight for third in the end. Potapievus, I thought, with the naked eye, might have just slipped in. 1200s between Drysdale with the goal and Salaiman this silver. But it is a British one too. And the two men who picked up the major championship titles going into this have dominated this decider. Marquez has for now been given third by two hundredths of a second. 17.60 to 1762. What a great success for Drysdale. And that for Salaiman as well. That was a great competitive race that we saw there. And there's always that question of that great start compared to that fast closing speed. And that one really went down to the right, went down to the wire. And interesting to see how several of them chose to, to use blocks to really enhance that start. And it looks like lots of them are wearing spiked feet. But here we really see Drysdale coming to his own. And they're tied for that long. And you can just see Sulon fighting him off. But in the end, it was Drysdale that took it. It was interesting to see in the corner. They were reaching speeds of just over 21 kilometers an hour. Gavin Drysdale from Air. Well, Scotland has been one of the homes of frame running for many years. And it was only in the last 20, 25 metres that he was able to get the slightest of margins. Eyes locked forward. And then a little glance across to see where Sliman might have been. And the realisation coming after that, that he is the world champion again. That's a great head-on shot. You can see it actually takes quite a lot of control of that bike as well um, to keep it within the lane. Because if they go outside of that lane, that, that will be, that will be uh, a disqualification. It's the uh, centre spoke that registers the time. And Gavin Drysdale from the Red Star Club in the city of another Red Star Club. In the foreground, he takes the gold, slam in the silver. So Gavin Drysdale of Scotland and Great Britain takes the gold. And that's gone down as a new European record, 16.66 seconds. Slam in the silver for Great Britain. And Vinicius Marcus, the bronze for Brazil. Good race, that. They're getting faster, they're getting stronger all the time. And they're getting much more attention too, which is uh, also great news. Uh, Rafa Salaiman. 23 years old now. Ding Dong. 
suffered bad injury at the uh, age of 12. But what a, a marvellous success for him here. Been a big comeback for the uh, clothing provider of these championships, which you just saw in the middle of the shot there a few seconds ago. They've had a big comeback in the last few years. Massive in the 70s and 80s in supplying the French football and rugby teams. And Argentina, if I'm not mistaken, in 86. Final of the men's long jump, T11. We are in the first attempt for the athletes. The next athletes on the runaway will be for the People's Republic of China. Ye Chen, Chou. by the way, uh, after his injury, before the men's long jump T11 final, complete visual impairment, he has gone and he has registered 480. That's good to see that he's managed to avoid a, a serious injury from that fall before. We've had the men's 100 metres T72. It's now time for the women's event. In lane one, Svea Kalitska. There's a, a range of ages in this event, all the way from 17 up to 52. There is quite some difference across the board in this one. So, so Kalitska of Poland will go in lane one. Lifetime best of 20.19. Season best of 20.50. For the youngster, Sofia 20 years of age, 18 years of age, Christine Jakobsen of Denmark. Her first major championships. Lifetime best set this year of 20.39. One of the favourites, 52 years of age, Maria Strong won a shot put bronze in Tokyo 2020. She's now in the frame running T72 category, looking to win a medal in this. Magdalena Androskiewicz of Poland. Best time in the field this year, 17.42 for Androskiewicz. Thea Jorgensen of Denmark. 23 years of age and 18 years of age to her right. Sayers Grooms in the United States of America. First major championships for her as well. Looks nervous, but looks ready to go. As does this lady. Judith Tortosa Villa, 17 years of age. Also the first major championships, enjoying herself. And Carla Rissom of Denmark, the third of the Danes in the field will go from out in lane eight. So Andruskiewicz of Poland in lane four has the best time of the year at 17.42 seconds. And to her left will be Maria Strong. 17.78, so the two athletes next to each other in three and four, the only ones who have gone sub 18 this season. There they are. And away they go. And it is those two in question. Andruskiewicz and Strong, who's got out in front of her. And Strong is looking just that. She is absolutely flying down the middle, is the Australian. And she's five or six metres ahead. Andruskiewicz in second place. But it's Strong in a time of 17.06. who goes across to take first. Andruskiewicz picks up second. And out wide, it looks like Tortosa Villa of Spain has come home in third position. Well, that there was some effort by Maria Strong. She was strong by name and strong by nature in that one. The lady who picked up shot put bronze. There's the lady who picked up bronze in this race, Judith Tortosa Villa. She looked happy beforehand. She looked relaxed. She picked up a bronze, but that's the lady who's taken a gold. The first for her country at these championships. 
that is a huge personal best registered by Maria Strong. And it looks like she's still not quite sure how she managed to do that. But she had a fantastic start and just kept pulling away. And it actually is quite tough as an athlete when you kind of expect a race to go a certain way. And she would have expected Magdalena from Poland to be there with her. Well, a lifetime best as well for Maria Strong, 17.07. And Druskovitz, 18.2 with a new European record and a lifetime best for Tortosa Vila of Spain, 18.90 seconds for her. And another couple of lifetime bests down the field as well. But that was an absolutely magnificent effort by Maria Strong. The top three, there was no doubt about that. No photos needed in this one. But the sheer power from Strong as she, not so much from when she got away at the beginning, but after about 15 or 20 metres, she really powered through. Look at those legs working. Look at the speed off the ground. Head up, straight ahead, finding that finishing line and finding a victory by about six or seven metres. And Druskovic in second and a Spain through Tortosa Villa, 17-year-old, who picks up a bronze medal. That was oh. the first time she touched the brake as she crossed the line. It is a requirement that all of the wheelchairs and all of the frames have brakes on them for safety purposes. Wasn't much safety heading down the track there, though. She was absolutely flying, and she knew where she was heading to, and she knew what she was going to get, a gold medal for Australia. And the new lifetime best for Maria Strong, 17.07, European record for Andruskovic, who takes the silver, a lifetime best for Judith Tortosa Villa of Spain, who takes the bronze. Well, there she is. Look at that. So young, 17 years of age, and isn't that great to see? You come to these championships to win, make friends, and improve on what you've done. And that is an added bonus, taking your medal away. It was a great race, too, from Tortosa Vila. Very composed, because she, she wasn't really in it at the beginning, but she kept her head down, and she kept working, and she came through with that bronze medal. No time to wait. Women's 100 metres T13 heats are coming up straight away. This is the category of least visual impairment. A maximum of 20% vision down to about 5%. Lydia Hadzamatova with that world record from Rio 2016. Four going in this uh, first heat, semi-finals effectively. The top three to automatically go through. And the next two fastest losers, a focus on the world championship silver medalist from four years ago, Rayan Suarez de Silva. But here is the reigning European and Paralympic champion, Adi Iglesias of Spain. Blanca Candela Cerudo, the Pan Am bronze medalist from Argentina. Four years ago, she achieved that in Lima. 23 now. Ryan Suarez de Silva. World Championship silver and world gold four years ago for Brazil. Erin Kerkhoff, eighth in the 400 meters at the Paralympic Games in Tokyo. And here is the reigning European and Paralympic champion for Spain, Adi Iglesias. Born in Bamako in Mali, moved at the age of 11. World Championship silver in the one and the two last time out in Dubai in 2019. Cerudo, Suarez, Kerkhoff, Iglesias, the four in this, three to go through to the final. Fastest of the field this year, Suarez and Iglesias, both 12-27. They've all won major championship medals. Kekov, youngest in the field at the age of 22 for the United States. Cerrito, Suarez, Kekov, Iglesias. 
They are the four in this. A blinding start. Great start by Saruda. Iglesias going so strongly in six now. The Paralympic champion. And this is why. Ahead of Suarez. Ahead of Kirchhoff. 12.33. Brilliant time. One of her fastest of the year. So good, so strong, such a whopping margin. Adi Iglesias has got a world title. It's the only crown she doesn't currently have, but she's looking really, really good for this. 12.34 has been rounded up to, but what a whopping margin of victory. Ahead of Suarez and Kirchhoff, who progresses well. But she won by 0.4 of a second, not four hundredths, four tenths. Magnificent. It's interesting to watch her, her block placement. Her feet are very high in the block, and you can see it clearly is working for her because she powered out from the start. And it was so smooth, the changes in the phases were barely perceptible. It was a tremendous start by her. She's there and the and nearest lane in lane six. And the rest playing catch up. Focus brilliantly. There's no strain on her face. There's no strain in her body. And we saw at the end of the race, she wasn't even breathing hard. But she knows this is a semi-final. There are, again, we have nine athletes and only eight spots. Clearly, she has something saved for that final. Quite a bit of reserve, part of a huge Spanish team in Paris and a huge win. 12.34, victory for Adi Iglesias, Rianne Suarez, Erin Kerkhoff also through to the final. Candela Cerudo needs to wait. pour Kudra Tilokon. Marouf Koudjaev, l'Ouzbékistan qui est toujours deuxième du concours avec 14 mètres 69 réalisé au premier essai à suivre dans le cercle le leader de ce Well, you have to feel for the men's T11 long jump which is taking place right next to the running track because they're trying to find a bit of silence between races to complete some of those jumps. It is ongoing. It was the beginning of the evening when it did start. I should say, they're still in the opening round. They are running way behind in it. Obviously, it started 15 minutes late because of the unusual injury to Chen. That's a decent effort from Ruslan Katyshev that you've seen there. Former World and Paralympic champion. So this is D. Dong Dong, ready to go, the Asian Games and Paralympic champion in this first round. It's gone out to 6 meters 19 this season, 655 is lifetime best. And he's met that right on the edge of the takeoff area, but he's got a good distance there. Di Dong Dong, absolutely one of the men to be. There are three Chinese starters here, and despite that injury to Chen, just before the start of the competition, they do have a chance of a clean sweep. Chen has already gone out to 480. 624 for Di Dong Dong, puts him into the lead. Ye Tao, the... Youngest of the three Chinese, the championship debutant, going now in the opening round. And he too has started very much at the start of the chalk, but he's got out a good distance. And that's looking towards six meters again for him. China looking to dominate early on, and that was six meters 11. Ye Tao in second place behind his teammate, Di Dong Dong. So the long jump continues. The track events continue right next to them as well. This is the second of the women's 100 metres T13 
hates. Eddie Iglesias, who took gold in those Paralympics in the previous race, the lady who took silver, will go in this one. The top three will go through. Canada's Bianca Borgella. But we just had the medicine. first major championship to her. Ran 12 12 at Ottawa in May. The world leading time this year for that lady there. Au lancer de Massu féminin catégorie F32, vous allez retrouver l'Algérienne Mounia Kassimi, vice champion. Four in the previous heat, there'll be five who go in this one. The Mia Valieva of Azerbaijan will go in lane three. Silver medalist in Tokyo 2020. She won gold in the 400 metres also at the Tokyo Paralympic Games. So the long jump continues, but it looks like we've uh, pulled up there with an injury. I, that's Chen again, isn't it? Yeah, it looks like he's really struggling with that ankle we saw invert before. Well, we'll get back to that in a moment and see if he can continue. This is definitely going to continue. Valieva will go from lane three. As I said, the silver medalist in 2020. Melissa Calvo of Costa Rica will go in lane four. She competed in 2020. Orla Comerford of Ireland made the final in 2017. She competed for the past two Paralympic Games, a bronze medalist in Berlin back in 2018. The lady with the leading time this year, Bianca Borgella of Canada. She almost looks as if she's a bit nervous to be there at the moment. Can't blame her. First major championships, so it can do that. She'll go from lane six. And Gloria Majaga of Botswana. Lifetime best set this year, 14.44 seconds. She will go in lane seven. So five to go. The first three definitely will go through. Lane three, Valieva. 11.99. Her lifetime best. She'll be hoping to get somewhere near that. Either here or in the final. Comerford of Ireland will go in five. And they get away. It is Orla Comerford who gets away very quickly indeed. But on the inside there, it's Lamia Valieva who's caught her easily. And Borgella on the outside. The top three are going to be guaranteed. As Valieva who goes through in a time of 11.91 seconds. So she's improved on her lifetime best. And she's also set a new championship record. That is quick indeed. She's taken... 0.08 of a second off her lifetime best. She's also taken 0.09 of a second off the championship record. Comerford Borgello make up second and third, but that lady there who took silver behind Iglesias in Tokyo 2020 has gone through in a new championship record and a brilliant run at that for Lamia Valieva of Azerbaijan, showing all the emotion. Lifetime best for Borgella and Comerford in second and third, but that lady there, it's been rounded down to 11.89. Love indeed, yes. That was some run. And she may have taken off a little bit slowly, but didn't she catch her? Comerford got out the blocks very quickly indeed, but just watch her on the inside there. I think Valieva surprised herself there, and, and sometimes you just get caught up in it if you feel a good run. And even though it is just a semi-final, I think you've got to take it and, and you've got to go with it. And actually, it, it can be less helpful to run slowly in these heats. The best thing you can do is stick with your training, stick with your rhythm. Great shot here of Comerford driving really, really hard out of her blocks. I think she actually caught Borgella off guard and she had to work quite hard to catch her at the end. Athletes knowing that only the top three are, are moving on. Well, that was some run indeed by Valieva. She's thrown down the gauntlet, hasn't she, to... Adi Iglesias of Spain, who took first place in the previous heat and also took gold at the Paralympic Games. 
in Tokyo 2020. But she looks pumped. I think goes the Mia Valier, but doesn't she? Her toughest challenge now is going to be able to come down from that huge run and just really bring those emotions back and remember there's still a job to come back and do. But you do want to celebrate the moment. That does feel good. It looked good. It felt good for her. The crowd really enjoyed it as well. Arm against some championship records. Another one. 11.89 for Valieva. Borgella goes through with a lifetime best of 12.03, as does Comerford with a lifetime best. And Melissa Calvo also of Costa Rica goes through 13.93 for her. A season best time. Well, some spectacular stuff in the track. We've seen quite a bit of spectacular stuff in the field as well. And that uh, T11 long jump final. So Chen, you saw previously, uh, just pull out of his jump. He did go again, but he's gone a three meters over one. He really is struggling. This is way down on what he'd normally expect. And Chen is currently in 12th position and down the field in this T11 final. And as you've seen, China doing really well with Di Dong Dong. 6.24 for the lead. Ye Tao of China, having been in second place with an attempt of six meters 11. Juan Muna Martinez looking to nudge his way into that, the Spaniard. Regular championship medalist, European champion. He was in the 400 meters in 2016. He's only recently come across into the long jump and a 6 meter 15 effort has put him up into the silver medal position. So D leading for China, 6 meters 24 and this is his second round attempt coming up now. Lex Gillette with the championship record of 6.45 and he pulled out of his first round attempt. 375 that being registered as so D Dong Dong coming now and he just has to stop and he has been stopped well by his uh, second guy the one close to the pit so he's got two with him some having one some having two three heads are better than two I think you can see the value of it here you this way you have a, an assistant to help you set you up, put you in the right direction, and then you'll have someone at the other end who, who's calling it. Crowd are having to stay quiet, of course. Complete visual impairment. And he's just pulled out of that one again. He was beginning to veer a bit to the left hand side he's still got about 40 seconds left on the clock it is a reasonably still evening i don't think we've actually had an illegal win mark yet in terms of uh, any of the attempts that windsock is flaccid at the moment 624 for d dong dong his lead 615 for one muna martinez Oh, he was veering to the right that time. He's overcompensated a little bit. And you can see there, this something is not quite right for him, but every time he slows down, there is an incredible amount of force going through through his legs. Big screens are saying shh around here at the moment. Just saw his guide down there at the actual pit was pointing towards something and noise that was happening on the far side of the pit. So he was pointing at that, saying that seems to be putting off his athlete. Well, so you know, where we're looking at these pictures here, if we're looking to the left, down the corner and further across, that seems to be, you can see him putting his hands up there now, the guide at the pit, putting his hands in the air, trying to get complete silence, because the issue is down on the track where the athletes are getting ready for the next race. And ironically, they are T11 athletes on the track as well, who we're going to see in a few moments. D Dong Dong coming now. 6.24 in the opening round. Now he's in, and now he's in the air. The fine landing a decent distance. The best things come to those who wait. He got what he wanted in the end. 
catégorie T11. It was an awkward wait for him. There's been a lot going on around the stadium. And finally, Di Dong Dong did get going. Again, it was quite near the front of the chalk dust for him. But he got a, a really good uh, distance in that. That was really, really good composure. To have a presence of mind to be able to restart three different times. And each athlete will get a minute for each jump, but the timer is held while the athlete is, is repositioned. And you see an excellent example of how to translate that speed into flight in the air. And that is 6.05 for Di Dong Dong, who doesn't improve, but who remains in the lead. Further, T11 athletes, complete visual impairment, which means we can only have four athletes alongside the four mandatory guides. The Pan Am champion is going in this first heat of four. Asian Games and Paralympic champion Liu Kuzhi. This is she. Gold in the two and the four in Tokyo. Gold in the four and the old four by one in Rio. And the reigning 200 meters world champion with silver in the one and the four in Dubai at the last world championships four years ago. We were due to have action in Kobe, you remember, in. Uh, well, 2021, 2022, and now it'll be 2024. So two world championships and a Paralympic Games in the space of 12 months. Championship debut coming for Merve Kazuran of Turkey. She goes in lane one with her guide, Mehmet Guner. She's 16, he's 19. They're in lane one and lane three for Brazil. The reigning Pan Am champion, world and Paralympic bronze for Yulia dos Santos. And that bronze of the Paralympic Games, London 2012. Her guide, Matias Santos de Oliveira. The reigning Asian Para Games and Paralympic champion, the former world champion, Liu Kuzhing of China, who's had her little burst away. Reigning world champion in the 200. She's in lane five. And let's reintroduce you in lane seven to Ioana Mazur. The European 1500 meters champion currently, the former European 400 champion. Former world champion in the 1500 meters. So, Carrelan, Dos Santos, Liu, and Mazur, the four in this. It is only the winner in each of these heats guaranteed to go through in the 400 meters. Tethered to the guide who cannot finish ahead of the athlete, remember? Otherwise, that's disqualification. But still winning major titles at this stage is Yulia de Santos. Semi-finalist she was in the 400 metres in Tokyo at the last Paralympic Games. And Joanna Mazur has been excellent at uh, 1,500 metres, decent at 400 as well. That is a very unusual double, isn't it? Uh, she's had a very, very busy day today. Perhaps that's why she wasn't so concerned when the Kenyan athlete burst past her. She thought, I need to save my energy for, for this evening. That was uh, earlier on in the 1500 meters semi-final. So just like the long jumpers, complete silence needed for now before they burst away. Liu Kuzhing is the world record holder from uh, Beijing five years ago. So Kajiran is in one, Yuri de Santos. Julia de Santos being Brazilian in three. Liu Kuzhing in five and Yuan Abzur in Seven, Mihao Stavisky's already had his name checked today, so there's another one for him. And Chen Chen Ming is the guide for Liu Kuzhing. It's quite the checklist that each guide has to go through at the start, ensuring that both the athlete and themselves are, are connected, they're in sync, the blocks are, are right. 
It really is a partnership and a huge amount of responsibility for the guide. So only the winner and the next four to go through. Kautsiran to Santos, Liu and Mazur. And this for a spot in the semi-finals. Great start by Liu Kuxing. Mazur has slowed down a little bit in the uh, outside lane, but she's trying to keep her own pace at the moment. Also going well, Julia de Santos for Brazil in this 400 meters first down heat. But Liu Kuxing is well into a stride right now alongside her guide, Chen Chen Ming, the reigning Asian Games and Paralympic champion. And also gliding well as de Santos now on the inside with Mazur. Chen has just been overtaken here by Julian de Santos. That's a real turn-up for the book. She's going to have to try and move it on quite a bit in the closing straight. But Julian de Santos, who went out in the semi-finals of the Paralympic Games, is going to qualify automatically for the semi-finals here. Maybe Liu Kuxing feels her time is going to be good enough, but de Santos will win it in a minute point two two. Liu in second place, Mazur in third, and Sharan in fourth spot for Turkey. But Julia de Santos gets the win this time. Well, there would have been an occasion 10 years ago when she'd have been really on form to beat Liu Kuxing. The form guide wasn't suggesting that today, though. De Santos wins it, one minute, point two zero, And that was a great psychological boost for her. I think that was perhaps a little bit of, of a surprise, but possibly not a surprise to De Santos. They ran together a great race. It was well paced. They they took their moment on, on the curve as they came around that home stretch and just kept building and kept building. Wait for the mark of his second attempt. The event that is and placing the really the matters in this heat, as you said earlier, China, only the meter, top finisher is guaranteed a spot. The rest of the athletes will, will have to wait. And that's because each athlete requires two lanes, which means there's only four lanes available in the final. It was a brilliant start by Lou for the first 150 meters. She's already overtaking Joanna Mazur here. The stagger eaten up. Mazur, despite being the 1500 meters expert now, is also still quite handy at 400. But then Julia de Santos moving up here on the inside from lane three on the back straight suddenly began to accelerate tremendously and once they reached the crown of the bend it was Julia de Santos the London 2012 bronze medalist who overtook and well I'm not sure Liu Kuxing was expecting that they really did work that bend well but I'm actually surprised watching that shot I did feel like Liu and her partner could have worked that corner harder there was they were quite far from the inside edge which meant that they were actually running a longer distance than necessary nothing guaranteed for anyone other than the winner in this contest. And it's Julia de Santos who makes it. It's the four heat winners, plus the next four who'll make it into the semifinals. And Julia de Santos is there for Brazil. It's quite close to a season's best as well. De Santos qualifies for the semifinals. 60.20. Liu, Mazur and Chatiran, with her lifetime best, will all have to wait. Time now for the second of the four heats for the women's 400 metres T11, complete visual impairment. These races will rattle through. And this race contains that lady there of Colombia. The fastest lifetime best of The athletes in this race, 56.17, her lifetime best. Blocks being set for both the guide and the athlete. Bit of practice. 
and will be away shortly. That lady there, we've already seen her today, Nancy Koesh. She ran in the 1,500 metres. In the heats a little bit earlier. So there's action happening across the board for the T11s in this evening session. We've got the long jump. We have the 400 metres happening. And it's all been a little bit chaotic at times because we need that complete silence for especially the long jumpers and the starts for the races as well. But each of these athletes has to be given time to get themselves into a position to be ready and comfortable to start the race. So you can't be pushing these swings through. Everyone is given an equal amount of time to get themselves into position. Blocks need to be set. Positions need to be set. Tethers need to be set. And all has to go in perfect shape to get underway. Taipei's Wu Ji Young in lane one there. And she gets herself prepared. Four going in this one. Leona Salcedo. Four golds and a silver at the Parapan Youth American Games this year for the Colombian. Angola's Regina Dumbo will go in lane five with her guide, Nadal Manuel Suarez. Lifetime best of 102.48 for the Angolan and out in lane seven from Kenya. Nancy Koesh, 1,500 metre heat earlier today. 400 metres now. That is a brutal schedule. Those two races can take it out of you. You can see Salcedo there, her season best of 59.61. Her lifetime best of 56.17. Lou, who went in the previous race, is the only one who has a better lifetime best in this event of those who are competing. So Tether's set. Wu in one, Salcedo in three, Dumbo in five, and Quesh out in lane seven. And they all get away fine and already Dumbo of Angola has gone straight past Quesh and coming up further along there is Salcedo who'd be the favourite to go through. Just the first place goes through in this race and then after that we'll have the next four fastest qualifiers who go through to the semi-finals. So it is Salcedo up on the inside who looks to almost be struggling a little bit there with her guide and trying to get that synchronicity in place. Up on the outside it's the Angolan in Dumbo who looked rather strong. Just pushing through on the inside there is Salcedo. She doesn't, doesn't look real comfortable there. The guy looks quite fine, but Salcedo almost looks as if she's struggling a little bit. Dumbo has realised that she's come up on the inside and her guide is trying to make a play to get to that finishing line. It's only the first who definitely goes through and Dumbo's fallen off somewhat and it will be Salcedo who goes across in a time of 101.40 seconds. So she looked to be struggling a little bit towards the 150 metre mark but it's Dumbo in the end who really found the going quite tough. That was an excellent and well paced race once again from Salcedo and we saw it in the previous heat it's the pacing that matters and and part of that is because the 400 metres is it's a sprint it's an event that your, your body's simply not designed to sprint for 400 metres you get to about the 300 metre mark and your muscles will work off anaerobic glycolysis for about 30 seconds maybe 40 if you're really really well trained but that's the point when the lactic really builds in the muscles and you are just fighting with your muscles and willing them to maintain that technique well there is Salcedo has qualified Dumbo has gone through in a lifetime best of 101.83 for her and Quesh in third but it was a very strong start by the lady from Angola 
Tumbo. She really came up on Nancy Quest straight away. Quest on the outside there of Kenya. And Salcedo, who has got a very quick time of just over 56 for her best time. They may be five seconds off, but I thought at that stage there that she really looked like she might be struggling a little bit, but as it was, it was actually Dumbo on the outside of those two athletes there who really pulled up hard towards the end, and she's been escorted off the track. But Salcedo, she held it together. Her guide held it together. The guide can't go across first. That was correct. And Salcedo will go through and advance to the semi-finals. I think it was a great run from Dumbo. We see she got a PB and she'll have known going into this heat. Only the first person is guaranteed that spot. And so you have to show up and you have to give it a try. And, and perhaps that was their strategy. We're going to go out hard and just see if we can hold on. Well, there's the confirmation. Diana Salcedo of Colombia has gone through to the semi-finals. Dumbo with a lifetime best in second, followed by Quetch and Wu rounding up the field in fourth position. So now the men's shot put F thirty seven at Met Ben Mosler of Tunisia. Brilliant opening attempt of 14 metres 15 to really set the standard for him. A solid second round attempt there. F37, the second strongest of the coordination impairment events. That's a brilliant throw beyond 15 metres. That's the first today that we've seen. And Ben Mosler, the world and Paralympic silver medalist, in a strong position here. That's a new African record of 50 metres 59, and he leads by almost a metre. We go to the women's club throw, F32, seated Musa Ibrahimi. The throw from over the shoulder, the classic stance in this. The twice Paralympic champion, the reigning world champion right now for Tunisia Ibrahimi. All the throws coming at once. There are 11 in this, so this competition will take a long time. But Ibrahimi is making quick work of it. And a championship record, 27.01. And Ibrahimi is into the lead. Excellent crowds in Paris at Stade Charlotte so far this week. As we go into the third heat of the women's 400 meters T11, complete visual impairment. Already, Julia de Santos of Brazil and Jonas Salcedo of Colombia have got the wins and it definitely threw to the semi-finals and the rest are having to wait. Quick look of Angie Pabon there of Colombia. Major championship medalist going into this. Laja Ishatile of Namibia, the Commonwealth Games bronze medalist in 2014 in Glasgow. On the outside, championship debutants, Emiloid Kasang of Angola, Adelina. So Jeff Kamai of Kenya in one, Angie Babon of Colombia in three, Ishatile of Namibia in five, and Amaloid Kasang of Angola in seven. And Jeff Kamai has not come out, you'll see, incidentally. So the woman who finished in the heat of the 400 meters for Kenya a few years ago does not make it. does not start so three in this Jeff Kemai was alongside Kenneth Legat who uh, is actually a quite quality athlete in his own right but they don't start Angie Pabon of Colombia the Paralympic bronze medalist from Tokyo two years ago with Luis Arizala as a guide Lajay 
Ishitile of Namibia has Sem Shimanda as her guide, the uh, Commonwealth Games bronze medalist from nine years ago now, and Emiloid Kasang of Angola has Jose Halpapa as her guide, the championship debut. There's been no change in the top three in the men's uh, long jump, by the way, still in the second round of that. So Pabon in three, Chitile in five, and Kazang in seventh are the three who do start this, and two of the three with major championship medals to their name. But it's the debutant Kazang of Angola who's going very well in seven at the moment. Is the African Para Games later on this year as it is in most of the continents in 2023. But now it's tightening up. Chitile is moving well in lane five for Namibia and Pabon on the inside for Colombia. When they straighten up, once they get the stagger sorted out, it's Pabon who's going to lead here and lead very well for Colombia. Uh, the woman from Cali, semi finalist of the Paralympic Games in the 100 metres in Tokyo, but who got onto the podium in this 400 metres and she's looking to get into the semi finals well. Now Ishitile is being urged to shoot on and that's what she's doing here in lane five. Ishitile is moving up well for Namibia and she's going to get the win. Ishitile takes it. 58-47. That's very fast indeed for her. Pabon in second and Kazang in third. That's a lifetime best by half a second. A season's best by two and a half. That's a very good win for Ishitile and she really moved it on in the final 50 metres and she had to. Pabon was leading as they straightened up into the closing 100 metres. But got overtaken by Isitele very impressively. A win of 58.46 official. They did very well to hold their form there, Isitele and her guide, especially at the moment when both of them can feel that technique breaking down. It was a solid start from the wall, but particularly at the outside from Kazang, but then faded towards the end. Yeah, and you can see at the start, your technique is holding, you can see the athlete and their guides in, in perfect sync. And then it all just changed as they hit that 200 meter mark and the positions were changing. And here is where we really see Ishitile. Her guide would have been communicating to her and letting her know where she was in the race and what they needed to do on that home straight. You can just see that little glance there. You can see the words. You can see the guide encouraging her on. We are now still in the second attempt of the A spot in the semifinal was up for grabs, and she just managed to find enough to do that. Again, that was a great shot of just seeing the guide slowing down. The athlete has to cross the line first. Otherwise, it is a disqualification. Son cinquième essai, elle est pour le moment troisième de cette finale du. Lasha Chatile makes her way through as the heat winner. She is definitely in the semi-finals. Cette mètre zéro un record des championnats. And it's better for Togol Umbata from Azerbaijan, five meter forty-one. Chatile takes that heat in a new African record, fifty-eight point four six. And Angie Pabon is also through as one of the next fastest due to the mathematics of it all. Another great shot here where you can just see all of the setup work that has to go on before the start of the 400 meters. And you'll be pleased to know the guides do get a medal. That hasn't always been the case, but it was recognized, the effort that is put in, the training they have to do. And so when those positions on the podium are decided, they will be there with their guides. Quite rightly so, because as you said, the amount of effort they have to put in, they're there doing the training exactly the same time. You can't do the work by yourself if you're the tier 11 athlete. So the, the guide has to be there doing type of things like that, making sure the tethers are all set, making sure blocks are set, making sure that synchronicity in running is there, making sure that the athlete is getting to their best of their ability. So the guide is quite within their rights to have a medal because without the guide, the athlete is nothing in the T11 sport of running or jumping or whatever it may be. 
Well, you're right. It, it is a massive commitment because it's not just running on the track. There's everything that goes around that. There's transportation getting to and from the track. There's the work that's going on in the weight room. And, and you need to have that partnership and that person there who is committed and has the time. And he's unbelievably talented physically. It's not easy. Exactly. Family disruptment for, for, for both the athlete, perhaps, and the actual guide. So there's a lot that goes into it. So it is great to know that they do get those medals as well. There are four going in this, the final heat of the women's 400 metres T11. And we saw Nick Mayhews there earlier. We've got some more in this one through Felita Simplicio. Who will go as the favourite in this race to Brazilian? Nausea Rage on the inside of Kenya. She also went earlier today in the 1500 metre heats. Her and her guy James Boyd will go from the inside lane in lane one. Juliana Merko of Angola, Six lifetime best of 102.18, will go in lane three. She competed in Dubai and Tokyo in the 100, 200 and the 400. There is Talita Simplicio, who will go in lane five, lifetime best of 56.80 seconds. Certainly heading out as the favourite in this. And Bill Quintana of Spain, this her fifth major championships. So all four will start. One will definitively go through to the semi-finals. And then after that, we'll be looking for the four best times across those four heats. Season best of 57.44 for the Brazilian Simplicio. Her lifetime best, slightly better at 56.80 for the lady who took silver at Tokyo 2020 and also a 200 metre silver as well. There's just a, another good shot of that tether that stretches around the fingers. And the guy will then attach to himself or herself, depending on who it may be. just saw there he, about three times he had to move those fingers back because they just slip forward and you don't want to tempt fate by making sure you're anywhere near that start line so they've been asked to just stand up an issue of some sorts just a green card will be issued here and everyone will be ushered back into their starting positions and the process will start again. It's actually quite surreal in the stadium right now. We have all this action going on. We have a very busy home straight and yet we have complete silence. And it's not because the crowd isn't loving it. It's just because they're being so respectful of the men's T11 long jump that's going on right now. They know they're going to need silence for the T11 400 meters about to take off. We have a great audience in the house tonight. Knowledgeable is, I think, the word we'll use. Which bodes very well for the Paralympics next year. It does indeed. It does make a difference when those watching on know that at certain times you just can't cheer for the sake of the athlete. We're just waiting for the long jump to conclude with a jump in the background so now the athletes will be ready to go and they get away in the 400 meters a very slow start from Nojere on the inside I think she may have struggled to actually hear the gun then because of the noise that had gone on in the background but as it is she's 50 or 60 meters back already stretching out way in front is Bill Quintana of Spain in the outside but flying up on the inside is the leader Simplicio of Brazil along with her guide Felipe Veloso, and you can't miss Simplicio with that pinky coloured hair there as she rolls around the 200 metre mark and trying to come up on the inside there is Moko of Angola, but at the moment it is a pretty simple ride for the lady who's known as Simplicio by name and also in the race at the moment with 100 metres to go. I think her guy's just having a chat with her and saying we're doing this quite easy here. 
they're 20 to 30 metres ahead with only around 40 metres remaining. So it's going to be a counter to the line and a time around the one minute mark. It's one minute point two seven and coming across in second place. Well, that's going to be a photo, I think, as Mogo falls down over the line and also Bill Quintana on the outside. But there's no doubt about the winner and the lady who will go through in first place through to the semi-finals in this women's 400 metres T11. It is Thalia Simplicio of Brazil. Confirmation of that time there. One minute point two six. It's been rounded down to. As Moko just gets her breath, she just had a fall when she went over the line there. Just lost her balance somewhat, and as the tether was released, it, it does happen. You get the lactic acid build up, and you you're not there being held necessarily running with your guide, and all of a sudden your legs get a bit jelly-like. And she went down, and she went across the line. She's just trying to compose herself and get her breath back as she's picked up and Bill Quintana who finished in second place it was a season best time for her Moko's been well, she's been urged to move towards the side she really looks like she's in a bit of trouble there yeah that does look like perhaps there was something going on that is, is more than just a lactic build up from a from 400 metres but just watch on the inside there you see the really slow start by Norgeray, who ran in that 1,500 metres earlier. It's a real tough task to run 1,500 metres and then back up in the evening session to do a 400. Moko there, she looks strong. Did the lady from Angola. But that lady looked even stronger. Felita Simplicio. Simplicio and her guide, Veloso, really made their mark on this race, on the back stretch coming into the 200. It was just smooth all the way. Well, she's got pedigree in this race, winning silver in Tokyo a couple of years ago. And there you just see, it's a beautiful shot of the synchronicity of, of the guide and the athlete. And, and this is where the guide has instructed her, we just need to shut it down. We don't need to go too hard. We've guaranteed our place in, in the semi. Let's save what we have and, and come back tomorrow. But there still was a bit of an effort going on in the back because placement still matters as there are still fastest qualifier spots up for grabs. Well, there is a disqualification we can bring you from Heat 2. It's the Angolan Dumbo who came in in second position, but Simplicio went through in that one. But here is Dumbo, who's on the outside. Well, she's run out of her lane. So you just saw there, her right leg, they get given those two lanes, and she, she ran out of the lane. So... Unfortunately, even though she finished in second position, and was a hope of going through as one of those fastest qualifiers. Regina Dumbo is disqualified and is out of these championships in the women's 400 metres T11. And that will affect those who had advanced through to the semi-finals. I think that is disappointing, and, and that is the reason why these athletes are given two lanes. There, there are two bodies that have to fit in, and unfortunately, you cannot touch that inside line. And that's what the judges pick up on, don't they? And brilliant camera work to pick it up there and just zoom in and just show us that angle of the foot going outside the lane, and that's what happens. You're given those two lanes. You have to stay inside those two lanes, but it's very difficult when you get tired, when you lose a bit of that effort with your guide and you fall back slightly and you happen to get taken through, then it's really difficult. If you take a wobble and a bit of a step, you're outside your lane. And it's happened on many occasions and it's, it's brutally hard for the athletes to have to deal with, but this is the type of thing that does happen because if it doesn't happen with one, then it can't happen with others and there'll be protests going in about situations happening but they've got to be cruel to be kind i guess you are technically running a shorter race if you infringe on the lines and, and you're right it's so difficult for the guide especially coming around that third bend where you are tired anybody who's tried to do a math problem when you're exhausted and, and having a hard set knows how difficult it is to keep your concentration and, and it can just get confusing and that that is just so disappointing 
But this is interesting now. We have the wheelchair athletes coming out, and it's going to be very difficult for that crowd to maintain that quiet atmosphere that we need as this T11 long jump is still going on. It's the final of the men's 1500 metres T52. So these are the second most impaired of the wheelchair athletes in the 50s. We'll be seeing the ultimate fastest ones very shortly. But seven are going to post for this decider, six of whom have major championship titles to their name. The reigning Asian world and Paralympic champion, Tomoki Sato, Sato Tomoki, on the outside. Here's Christian Torres, the Pan Am bronze medalist for uh, Colombia. <coughs> Number four, the reigning European champion, the 10 times European champion, Thomas uh, Gerspickler of Austria. And then the reigning Asian World and Paralympic champion, Sato, on the outside. Stichus Skukas there wearing five. European silver two years ago in Big Gosh in the most recent European Championships, but previously a high quality para swimmer. Representing Colombia, Christian Torres. So seven in the final, Torres on the inside for Colombia, Perez for Mexico. The world silver medalist, the Paralympic bronze in Tokyo two years ago. Wearing three in his helmet is Bichaya Kuratanasiri. Bronze in the 1500 meters in the 2016 Paralympic Games in Rio. Outside him for Austria, four in his helmet. The 10 time European, five time world, and twice Paralympic champion, Thomas Gerspickler. Wearing five for Lithuania, European silver last time out, and the former European champion of a 400 meters, Kastuta Skukis of Lithuania. It's six for South Africa, he to the one and the two in the last World Championships in 2019, Brandon Bick. And on the outside, the reigning Asian Games World and Paralympic champion, Sato Tomoki of Japan. Sato is surname. They've uh, looked to revert back to how it was up to 60 years ago, the surname coming first. So Sato, Biek, Skukas as we move inside. And Gersh Pickler, Kurnitsiri, all ready for this final of the men's 1500 metres, T52. So underway, Torres, Perez, Kurnitsiri, Gersh Pickler, Skukas, Beek and Sato. They are the seven in this final. And moving away very well on the inside is Christian Torres. Straight away, the Pan Am bronze medalist in Lima four years ago. Great start by the Colombian. 403 is season's best. 350 is his lifetime best. He's opened up a big start straight away over Perez of Mexico and the rest are behind, but it is Tomoki Sato, the world record holder, the champion record holder, who's all the big titles at the moment, who started quite slowly, who's bided his time really well. Sato flying, three laps to go in this, and what a big start straight away. Perez in second, and Kurt Siri in third place. Gears Pickler in fourth with just almost two and a half laps to go. What a big lead from a man who knows so much in this. In lane seven, Sato Tomoki with the big lead, defending his title and doing a great job of it. Leads by 50. Sato has the advantage of knowing that he is the fastest on paper and he's able to treat this almost as a time trial and just go out. The one, I think the reason why he's gone out so quickly is that he doesn't want to give anyone behind him a free ride. Drafting is really important in this event and with him going so far out, he knows that no one's going to catch him. So really what's going on, we have a very exciting battle for second and third behind him. Well, for Sato with two laps to go, it's an exciting lead for him. But the big justice for second spot at the moment is Perez in second place. Kurtan Isri is in third and Gersh Pickler is in fourth spot. And they're a quarter of a lap right now behind our runaway leader Sato of Japan. Perez is still holding second spot quite well. 
But they're now around 75 meters behind, 100 meters behind now. Paris is holding second spot very well, but unfortunately behind him are two men who are drafting. You get about a 30% energy saving from that position, and I suspect they are taking that and perhaps will try and come around him in the final lap. But there we have Sato clearly ahead. The crowd is roaring him on as he comes down. He's not worried about setting a championship record. He's just worried about winning at this point. Well, there's a third of a lap of a lead for Sato as he takes the bell. He holds the championship record from Dubai four years ago of 339.99. Perez only going one hand at the moment, but he's in the silver medal position. It's Kortanisiri trying to take over. And in fourth spot, Gierspickler. But right now, they find themselves almost half a lap behind as they now take the bell with Perez in second and Kutunizri in third place. Well, that's the big battle for the medals right now. But in a league of his own and a lead of his own, almost half a lap clear at this stage is Sato, who's way up on the other side, who's got about 150 minutes to go. Perez in second spot. And what you can see happening here... Pichai of Thailand, he has pulled out from behind. That's him ready to make a move. And Thomas, Gears Pickler for Austria, he has called this right and he's getting behind the athlete. Sato is coming clear to win it. Sato is the world champion again, who defends his title in a new championship record. 336.23. And the rest were way behind him. And they still are. Kudanisiri in second place. Gears Pickler. Now trying to move in on the inside, the reigning European champion, the 10 times European champion. Gersh Bigler will take the silver medal for Austria. And Kutanasiri gets the bronze for Thailand. A game effort by Paris and Mexico taking fourth spot. And Skukas of Lithuania is in fifth. Torres of Colombia in sixth place, but Sato was so way ahead of them. He was almost two thirds of a lap clear. He wins in 336. Sato takes the gold. It was a huge win for him. Gears Bickler in second spot did brilliantly for Austria, and he's been winning major championship medals since Sydney 2000 when he won bronze in the marathon. Brandon Beck of South Africa coming to finish now. But what a great win for Sato. It is Sato who's won it, irrespective of what you might have seen on the, uh, the screens around the stadium. Tomoki Sato, a massive win, 336, and that was fantastic. I think what I really liked about that race is each athlete that won gold, silver, and bronze really controlled and ran pushed a race that worked for them. So Sato knew he the best shot for him for winning was to go out to the front, not risk any sort of crash, not risk getting in the way. He had his gold medal. But what was really, really interesting was to see the way that Gears Pickler played that. He bided his time. He sat behind. He was more than happy to let other athletes pull him. And as he came around that final bend, he charged towards the silver medal. Now just look on the outside, Sato, who was in lane 7, shot in very, very quickly indeed, and produced a sparkling display, Perez was going one hand all the way through and was just edged down in the end, down into fourth spot. Now look at him go, Torres started really well, I kept my eye on him very clearly, but then Sato, from lane 7, had made his way and destroyed that staggering move from the outside to the inside, inside, what, 75, 80 meters. And from there on in, for the remaining 1,400 meters, he really was in a class of his own. I think by way of explanation as well, you might have been watching that race and just seeing a few different styles of pushing. So the men's T52 category, it tends to be for athletes that have paralysis in their legs and they're also affected in their torso and it also affects their arms. And that's why we did see an athlete there that was pushing with just one arm. So Sato wins championship record 336.22. Gersh Pickler, the silver for Austria and Kurat Anasiri, the bronze for Thailand. And Sato does it again for Japan.
Well, here we go. The wheelchair racing continues. This, the fastest of the categories, the T54, the opening round, and the men's 5,000 metres. Marcel Hoog, the world record and championship record holder, he will be going in heat number two. Six to go in this one. The man who was fourth in 2017. Faisal Al Raji of Kuwait will start off on the inside in lane one. Yoshida Riola of Japan. After seeing Sato just then, he'll be keen to emulate something like that to get through to the final. Sing Lam of Thailand. Lifetime best set this year of 9.25.67 for the Thai. Always strong at Thailand in the T54. Lugmi Malta of Austria. 1,500 metres in the World Championships in 2019. He's upped it now to the 5,000 metres. And here's a man who needs no introduction. He's been around for a long time, making his European Championships debut back in 2005. Julian Cassily and Daniel Sibri of Great Britain, who made his debut at Tokyo 2020. He was also in the England team in the Commonwealth Games last year. So six away in this one. And they'll have 12 laps remaining when they come across the start line in 200 metres time. Julian Cassley is very experienced. He's been around a long time and you would expect him to use that experience in this type of event. But it's our Raji of Kuwait who's got out to an early lead and being followed by Yoshida of Japan. So those two have gone out early. It is the first three who will go through. So there'll be a bit of toing and froing and a, a bit of tailing of each other and switching of positions you would expect in a race where perhaps it's not like one of those races at Sato one where he got out very quickly. They'll all bunch together. Someone might make a run for it and then all of a sudden they'll bunch back again and try and keep with each other and it'll be tactical more so with the fact they've got so many laps to do. But you can see they've just slowed down there at the front and they'll be looking around at each other and saying to each other, who wants to take the lead? Do you want to have a go in front? I've done a bit of work. It might be your turn to go there now. It's Thailand though through Siang Lam who leads at the moment. And it's Great Britain's Daniel Sibri who's currently there along with Cassley as well who's in second place. And Cassley, I go back to 2015 and Julian Cassley, they were involved in a T54 5,000 metre race and there was a crash, there was a protest, and the racers had to come back the next day and do 5,000 metres all over again. It was Rowat Tana who won it the first time, and Rowat Tana won it the second time. He's not here in this race at these championships, but I don't want to see anything like that. But it was a phenomenal endurance for Rowat Tana to be able to come back and do the same thing all over again. Great Britain, Daniel Sibri. This has been a very interesting race strategically so far. I was a little bit just surprised to see Alberti go out so hard. I think he caught a lot of the athletes off guard, particularly Daniel Sibri, who took a very slow start and then had to do some work. And I suspect the reason he started hard is because he knows that the first three need to qualify, but there is going to be a huge fight for those fastest loser positions. And nobody wants to miss out. So I think that Alro. Jay, he, he, he wanted to go out and really push the racers. Let's make this a hard race. Let's not rely on the qualification spots. But it's interesting. He split the field, and they've now all come back together. And like you said, they almost had this little conversation between, like, okay, guys, what are we going to do? Are we going to work together, get a fast time, and then go for positions? Yeah, I love watching the T54 races. It's such a – it's a – it's brutal in the way that they have to race in the in the speed and the, and the endurance that you have to have for any athletes who do this distance. It's very, very hard indeed because it is mentally and physically taxing and a lot of lactic acid build up on their arms and upper body as they go through. But there are a lot of tactics involved in it. And that man there, Daniel Sibri, he might not have been around as long as someone like Julian Cassidy, but they all know. They all speak to each other. They all learn from each other and they all work out that you can't lead a race especially at this distance, all the way through. Trying to do 12 and a half laps out in front by yourself is just not a possibility. And 
you'll see them all having a little look around and someone will get on someone's tail there and then they'll move around to the outside and Sibri now you can see he won't want to be out there too long because he's doing extra work as he goes around. Well, you're right. He pulled out because he's saying, look, guys, I'm not pulling this for you. But the problem is when you pull out, it can be very difficult to get back in. And at the moment, no one's being polite. Nobody's letting him in. It looks like he's going to have to go right to the back of the pack. Oh, there we go. He got a position. Well, eight laps to go in the men's 5,000 metres T54. There is action, though, still happening in the field. Once again, we're seeing another change of position at the front of the pack. As we return to the women's club throw, the F32, Ibrahimi with the championship record of 27.01 and in pole position at the moment. Three of that, 20.44 to date. That's her final attempt. Got it beyond the 20 metre mark again. She's currently lying in seventh position in this F32 Women's Club Throw final. She's an F31 athlete, which is uh, a bit more restrictive in terms of the impairment compared to the F31. She also has her own set of medals uh, should I say her own set of records to be chasing she didn't leave much time left on the clock only about five seconds to go if Rami's still leading with that F32 championship record of 27.01 Ibrahim in second spot for Morocco 25-26 and that's a new championship record for the F31s for Hind Friua of Morocco 20.58 well, back at the men's 5,000 metres T54, they've got just a little over six laps remaining. And it is Siang Lam of Thailand who leads at the present time ahead of our Reggie of Kuwait. Julian Castley, while we we're away looking at the field event there, was out in front, but he had his turn and he just snuck away and let someone else take over. And you just saw a nod of the head then as one of the athletes said, you go past, you take over, I'm not going to keep on doing this. So out in front at the moment, it's Kuwait's our Reggie, who's out in front at the moment in that position with all of them in a perfect line. And this one, Steph Reed, looks like it's going to come down to a sprint at the end, or at least in those last two laps, because there's no one who wants to give. There's no one who's actually taking too much at the moment. And at some point, someone is going to have to make a bit of a burst for it. It is only the first three who automatically go through and then it will be the next four fastest. And you have to remember in the next heat, Marcel Hoog and plenty of talent is going through in the second heat in this 5,000 metres T54 as well. You're right. At the moment, everyone's being very polite. They're all taking their turns. And this, this is important because, as you mentioned before, the drafting really comes into it here. You can get a 30% saving. But the thing is, as these laps count down, and currently the counter is sitting at five, your position in that pack really starts to matter. Because if you consider each of these wheelchairs is probably roughly two meters in length, if you're at the back of the pack and somebody sprints off, you have a lot of ground to make up. Well, Julian Castley is, you talk about being in a position, he's currently sitting in fourth position. So if we looked at taking turns in laps, then Julian Castley would be looking pretty good if someone moved to the outside from in front of him. I don't think that's going to happen, but I'm just looking at it from a numbers point of view because they've got four laps to go as they go across the line here. So 1,600 metres remaining in this men's T54, 5,000 metres opening heat. The first three do go through and the pace is... Well, it had, certainly hasn't sped up any, what, let's just say that. So there is going to be, in the next lap or so, the pace is going to come on from someone, and someone is going to have to push it. Because at the moment, I wouldn't say it's lethargic, but it's certainly slowed right down to an absolute counter as they come around the 200-metre mark on the far side. Out in front at the moment, it is Sianglam of Thailand, and Thailand have a very strong pedigree in these T54 5,000 metre races. They do, and I just want to pick up on that move right there. I'm surprised to see that Danny pulled out from the top with only three laps left to go, and I was intrigued to, to see that Julian Castley let him in. However, I think Julian Castley is hedge, hedging his bets on the fact that Sidbury is going to be the one that's going to sprint round, and he wants to be on his tail when he makes his move. 
And when someone does make that move, that's going to be the key because you don't want to be on the outside there trying to get back onto the inside. Uh, as we see there through Sianglam, the Thai athlete, because you, if all of a sudden someone puts the pace on and you're sitting two or three wide and you're having to cover that extra ground there, the work that's going to be going through your arms and the pain that you're going to be feeling is going to be quite intense indeed. But the pace it still hasn't quickened. So when they come around, they'll have two laps left to go. But someone very soon is going to make a move. You can see there Julian has not let the athlete in. You could feel him. He could feel the stare and the glaring, but... We're getting down to the business end of this 5,000 meters, and I think Julian Casoli is exactly where he wants to be. Well, Sanglam at the moment has him just tied in there. So Casoli at the moment, he can't really get out. He's just sort of made a look to the outside of Daniel Sibri's right back wheel, and he's maybe trying to find a gap to get through there. But at the moment, the tire athlete Sanglam is really doing a lot of extra work because he's sitting too deep, and he's been there for the last 400 metres. He's trying to get back in, but he can't find a way back in because those guys know if I let him in now, I put him in front of me, and I'm going to have to do the work around the outside. It's our Reggie of Kuwait who leads at the moment. It's Sibri of Great Britain who's currently sitting in second position and he's looking very strong. Now just remember it's only the top three who go through. Julian Cassidy, he's a cagey character. He's been around for a long time. He's experienced. He'll know what's happened. But the man from Thailand, Sianglam, is still sitting too deep as the pace will surely come on as they go across and take the bell. And there it goes now as the Kuwaiti athlete, Aureji, who's put that pace on. Daniel Sibris looked to go with him. And the Anglam, the Thai athlete, is still sitting wide. He's been there for the last three laps. Kassili is in third position. So at the moment, it's Kuwait, it's Thailand, and it's France. And the French crowd, you'd think, would like to cheer their athlete on as they get through to a final. So it's Kassili in third position. He's been around for a long time. He's sitting there. Has the Thai athlete, Sianglam, really worked himself too hard by sitting on the outside? It's looking that way because he's coming back three or four metres behind. And at the moment, it's Alfaji who leads at Sibri. And here comes Julian Castley down the outside. It's going to be those three who go through. And Sibri is going to take it. It's Alreggi on the inside and Julian Castley in third position. 10.46, 7.6, the time there going across for the winning time for Faisal Alreggi of Kuwait. So not exactly a fast time. The championship record you see there, 10.20. The world record is another minute or so faster than that. You would expect the second heat to be a little bit quicker, but it was a, a cagey affair. There was experience used. And I think the tyre athlete, Sianglam, when he was at four laps to go, he got himself caught there a couple wide, and he really had two laps where he was in that position, and he used up so much extra distance. I think that Julian Cassidy played that exceptionally well. As I said, he, he let Daniel, he let Danny Sidbury in earlier, knowing that 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 was the athlete with the most speed. That was the person he wanted to sit behind. And when Siang Lam came, he pulled off. He looked at Pierre. Think, he looked at Julian Casoli thinking, are you going to let me in? And he looked back and said, no, I am not. And as you can see, he spent the last four laps running wide, doing too much distance, not getting that draft. Well, Sibri played it well, didn't he? He sat there. He knew exactly what he was doing. And even though he hasn't been around for a long time doing this, he has obviously learned very quickly, as you have to do all the good races. They watch the greats and they see how they do things. And the greatest of all is coming up in the next heat of this. But Daniel Sibri of Great Britain has qualified in first place, 10.46.76. Julian Cassidy. 10.46.85 for him and Fazal Araji of Kuwait, who did a lot of work at the front himself, finally made it through in 10.46.87. They'll be the three who progress through to the final. And what a final it promises to be, the second semi-final coming up very shortly indeed. But this one here, well, from the start, Sibri on the outside, and it was the man from Kuwait, Faisal Araji, who, well, he did plenty of work throughout the actual race. He was at the front on numerous occasions, and Sanglam, you see there, who's on the outside and a couple wide there, he got caught in that position with around four laps remaining, and he just couldn't get back on the inside, and quite rightly, as you said, 
Julian Castle used a bit of that experience and kept him out there and made him work extra hard. It was a very efficient race from Julian Casoli, and you can see he, he had the presence of mind to pull wide on that final one to give himself enough room to, to sprint and make sure he could get by anyone. Well, these races, they can either be held for leather or someone just takes off and, and makes a, a, a race of it. I've seen people in these races who've gone out to leads of 150 metres and in the end they've been caught back. A bit like the peloton when it comes to actual cycling. And in this case, it didn't happen though. Daniel Sibri goes through in first, Julian Cassidy in second position and Fazal Araji of Kuwait goes through as the third Ladies automatic qualifier. Maybe you should turn your gaze to the well, that's one final F55. Done. And another one now on the way. The second heat of the men's 5,000 metres T54. Putteret Kongrak of Thailand is in lane one. The Asian Games silver medalist and the uh, Pan Am bronze medalist. And then in two, Thibaut Dara, championship debut for him. For France, and on his inside, Prawa Waharam, the Asian Games World Championship, Paralympic gold previously. Bader Alazani. The Asian Games world champion currently for the United Arab Emirates. And then here he is, the silver bullet, Marcel Hoog, the European and Paralympic champion. Two silvers and one bronze in the last Worlds four years ago. Kubo Koza of Japan went out in the heat of the 5,000 metres of the Paralympic Games in Tokyo previously, a fine cross country skier. And then in lane seven, 22 year old Samuel Rizzo. Congrat Dara, Waharam, Alazani, Hu, Kubo and Rizzo, the top three going through from this heat of the 5,000 metres. So away they go. So the top three and the next four who will qualify. A bit of movement on the inside from Thibaut. Dara, the championship debutant, the 20-year-old. Born in Toulouse, the silver medalist in the French Championships in 2020 in the 100 and the 200. This is considerably longer. Marcel Hoog, though, the man with a familiar silver helmet, leading the way with 12 laps to go, just as you would very much expect. He has been the man, time and again. And we're talking for so long in terms of the Paralympic Games. Would he ever win a Paralympic gold? And in his last six Paralympic competitions, he has won the gold medal each and every time. He's unbeatable in that. He didn't win a gold in the last World Championships in Dubai. But he, time and again, nine times world champion, six times Paralympic champion, 13 times European champion. There was one stage in Bidgosh. Uh, two years ago at the last Europeans, he said he'd lost track of the amount of the European titles that he had won. 13 gold, no silver, and three bronze. And now he wants the rest to do their job. Kumo Koso is the one he wants to hit the front and does so with 11 laps to go. Well, this is fascinating because pretty much every race that I have seen Marcel Hugin this summer has gone to the same plan. He's gone to the front, he's pulled the race, he's pulled several racers behind him to very fast times. And he's had enough at the end to still out sprint everyone. I don't think I have seen him yet this season wave someone through, which is very interesting. And it's very unfortunate for these racers who will have been hoping that he would have pulled them to a fast time. Yeah, it's uh, Kongrak who hits the front for Thailand, bronze in the 15 and the 5,000 meters in the Paralympic Games in Tokyo. Asian Games, silver in the 1500 last time out in Jakarta, bronze in the four and the eight. It's been a somewhat sedate pace. Hook was getting a little bit fed up, you might have thought, taking things out of the front. Congrat leading. Waharam in second place, Thailand one and two, heading with 10 laps to go, but Hoog is where he wants to be right now with Kubo on the inside. 10 laps remaining in this, the top three going through plus the next four, but the 28 times major championship gold medalist is 
in a decent position in fifth spot right now. He's not going to worry too much about where he is at the moment. It'll be interesting to see if the two Thai athletes do decide to, to work together. Because with Marcel so far back right now in fifth, we did see a little bit of a gap open up earlier. If they wanted to, they could take off. And as you say, he would get caught behind quite a bit of traffic. In the men's 5,000 meters. Yeah, they're still quite tightly bunched together at the moment as they come in with nine laps to go. It's the Thai competitors who are still out in front, Puderet Kongrak and... Prawat Waharam, the, the reigning Asian Games and world champion, the Paralympic gold medalist once upon a time. Alazani is tucked in there as well. And Thibaut Dara, With well, it's good to see him in the four. He's one of the young French competitors who has been uh, well profiled ahead of this. The man with two in his helmet, uh, involved in a bike accident at the age of 14, based uh, around Osh these days. And they are beginning to spread out a little bit. Marcel Hoog is still quite where he wants to be at the moment. The pass master time and again leading the way with eight laps remaining. And now he's beginning to take the pace up a little bit as well. That way, in the space of about 50 meters, we saw a complete change of positions. Marcel went from, for, from fifth to the front of the pack and both of the tie athletes fell to, to the back. Faring really well, though, at the moment is Marcel, who not much movement behind them. Ritzo of Australia, the 22-year-old in his first World Championship, now moving up at the inside behind Alazani of the United Arab Emirates. But still faring well in this men's 5,000 metres T54 and still a long way to go in this, around seven and a half laps. Alazani having his spell at the front of affairs. Coming through with seven laps to go. Pace still could be a bit faster, but it's all about the positioning in this and not the times. Rizzo has been up at the fore for a lot of this. So the third attempt in the men's long jump T11 complete visual impairment. D Dong Dong. 6.24 with his opening attempt, which was a season best. This, his third attempt. When that looks over six metres as well. He's in first position already. It certainly looked decent. No problems at all. Remember, it's from where they are on the board, where it's taken from. Encore six tours à parcourir pour les concurrents du 5000 mètres masculin catégorie T54. La mesure à suivre pour Renan. Just waiting for confirmation of D Dong Dong. 615. He still stays in third position. And Marcel Hoog is still very much at the forefront of this 5000 meters semi final in the T54 ahead of Alassani of the United Arab Emirates, who's never won a major championship medal globally before. He was one of those many debutants in the one off Asia Oceania championships in Dubai in 2016. But Marcel Hoog out in front, five laps to go, and well in control of this. Alazani in second, Kongrak in third. There have been a couple of championships where the Thai competitors have been very, very dominant. But now there's a gap emerging. Four and three quarter laps. And now Hoog, for the first time, has opened up a gap of around 10 meters. So we have about five laps to go. And we already know that this, this heat is faster than the previous one. They have the advantage of knowing what that fastest qualifier spot is, but you can see that the athletes behind are looking to chase him down. The move has been, there's been an injection of speed, but it's not been decisive. Well, if there's one man who's been so decisive in his career, it's Marcel Hoog. The last six Paralympic Games events he has entered, he has won every heat and every final and every gold medal. And he leads here with Kuba now moving up into second position, the former 2014 Winter Paralympics bronze medalist in the seven and a half kilo cross country skiing, just like to Dan McFadden. He's used that stamina sapping 
talent so well in terms of the wheelchair racing. But Marcel Hoog, he's been a man who's been so unbeatable for so many years in the biggest races. And Waharam has now moved up in his second spot behind him. And it's the other triathlete, Gongrak, who's in third with a top three to go through. And the next time they come round, it'll be three laps to go. At the moment, it's this, this three in the top group who are primed to qualify. But they have managed to chase Marcel down. Kubo is in fourth spot, but Huga's well in control at this stage with three laps remaining. He's just allowed himself slide back a little bit. Waterham in front. Huga in second place. Kongrak is in third. And then a big gap back to fourth spot to Kubo of Japan, whose time I think will be very good. The rest are being left behind slightly at the moment, including... A Sam Ritz of Australia, the World Championship debutant. They still have a chance of maybe coming up and dealing with Kubo a little bit. But it's Thailand 1, Switzerland 2, Thailand 3, and there'll be two laps to go. It's Waharab, Hug, and Kongrak with 800 metres remaining. And then in fourth spot, it is Kubo of Japan. And we can just see that lap again. There was a little bit of an injection of speed. And, and perhaps this is, these athletes at the front, they already know that they're in the qualifying spots. Maybe this is them just testing each other out, testing the strategies, trying to discover what, what the top speed of a Zeke athlete is and how long they can hold it in preparation for that final. Marcel Hug is looking very comfortable. And so too, Putarat Kongrak and Prawat Waharam of Thailand. Waharam who won the... Rio 2016 goals in the 1500 and the 5000. It was from then on, after those two races, that Marcel Hug took his career into his own hands. It is Hug, Kongrak, and Waharam, the top three to go through. Still a lap to go, but we know who's going to qualify here almost certainly, certainly automatically. Marcel Hug, well out in front. 300 minutes remaining, and right now Kubo of Japan is in no man's land in fourth spot. He's in an island way behind the top three, but quite a bit ahead of the back three. Marcel Hoog leading the way. There'll be a little bit of a psychological advantage, you would imagine, for whoever wins this three-man shootout. They are all into the final. There's no worry about that in this 5,000 metres decider. Well, Waharam is the reigning world champion, the reigning Asian Games champion. Hug leading the way in the final straight. It's almost as if they're going for the medals here. Hug takes it. Waharam and Kongrak, second and third. There will be a battle for fourth spot. It's a championship record. 10.99. And moving up to take fourth is Alassane. Looking to grab that spot in the final. It's the next four who will qualify across the two heats. But Marcel Hug takes the win. He breaks his own championship record, set in Lyon 10 years ago by one second. And in Lyon, the last world championships to be held in France, he went for five goals and he won them all. 10.19 is the new championship record for Marcel Hood. Well, those two heats were a great preview of what we can expect in the final. We already know that Marcel can, can win a time trial, but... World Championships are, are different. We know that his world record is 9.15. That was a new championship record in 10.19. Because in these races, this is all about position. And the track here won't be as fast as the track that he set his world record on in, in Notwell, Switzerland. But again, this is a race where athletes are feeling each other out and figuring out what will be that game plan for the final. In the long jump, it's a white flag for... Well, uh, it was a nice sprint in the end won by Hook and a nice sprint, I have to say, well, by Al Hassani as well of the United Arab Emirates to take fourth spot overall. He will qualify for the final with that time. I'm certain of that. 10 minutes 30. But Marcel Hug, I think, was very much the puppet master of that semi final as he will wish to be again for the final. Of his best performance in this event. I think what Marcel's show there is that I have a lot of different ways I can, win, I can win this race. I have the speed, I have the tactics, I know how to position. And in the men's but it was interesting to see Warham and Congrat just 
mix positions up, just let him know we're still here. You haven't quite shaken us. And you could just, just see on that final 100 meters, picking up the pace, even though they knew that they had qualified. Just wanting to send that little extra message. He wanted to win this sprint as well in the closing straight, no doubt about that. He wanted to push back Waharam, who is the defending champion, and Kongrak as well, who took bronze in the 15 and the 5 in the Paralympic Games in Tokyo. Silver in the last Asian Games. Hug is a man on a mission again, and he's looking to win it all at the World Championships again. Almost a dead heat between Waharam and Kongrak. They've both been given the same time of 10.19.33, but no worries about Marcel Hood there. Chance to add to his nine world titles coming up in the men's 5,000 metres final. And you can see the photo finish that came to affiche. All smiles and unstoppable today. You can see the cameraman in his helmet there. It's so shiny. He is known as a Swiss silver bullet. Marcel Hood takes it 10.19.11, breaking his own championship record. Waharam going through in second. Kongrak going through in third. Alazani, Kubo, Rizzo and Dara, we will all see in the final. They all qualified. And in the long jump for the United States of America, we are waiting for the mark of Lex Gillette, 5 meter 81. It's better than its uh, previous jump. That was a nice run out for Marcel Hoog. A nice preview of the decider and the week's the excitement Ruslan to come. So there's still quite a bit left in that and a couple of rounds left in the T11 long jump. That's Ruslan Kachev with his penultimate attempt. Sitting in eighth position. Only eight remaining in this after the first three. Just to remind you that wherever he jumps on that board, the mark will be taken in the T11, a much bigger board. And the mark is taken from where the athlete leaves the board. So Kachev in eighth position. D Dong Dong up in First place, the reigning Paralympic champion. Lex Gillette, who's a three-time world champion, sits in seventh position, just ahead of the Ukrainian Kachev. Kachev with his first of 5.78. A foul, 5.58, 5.51. And this one, not too dissimilar. C'est la fin du concours et de la finale du Tour. Il est le masu féminin catégorie F32. On vous annoncera les résultats dans quelques instants pour le moment. Retour sur la. There you go, that answers it. 5.50, so he remains in 8th position. Avec le saut en longueur catégorie T11. Yes, in the men's long jump, T11, the next on the runaway. So a few to run. And jump still in this penultimate round of the men's long jump T11 final. It has taken quite a while. There was an incident at the beginning with one of the athletes who injured himself and had to withdraw eventually. Chen Jingyu is certainly down on what he can normally jump. The Chinese, so... Only three jumps for him, and he was eliminated. This is Uzbekistan's Egamzarov. A lifetime best for him with his previous jump of 6 metres 06. 5.53, his best before that. So he added 50 centimetres or thereabouts to his lifetime best. Amazing what these major championships and a bit of adrenaline can do. But it's China currently in gold and bronze. And it's Spain through Martinez in the silver medal position. This man in fourth position currently needs to find about another nine centimetres to put him into the bronze medal position. Hard to see that one though. 
being enough for him. It's a great slow motion shot there, actually, of his guide, and how quick and agile he was to get out of the way there. So 573, it leaves him in fourth position. He'll have one jump left to try and propel himself further up that leaderboard into a medal. Just a quick note about Lex Gillette in this. He was heading out of the competition with a, a low first mark and a foul in the second round, but his third attempt of 5.46 got him into the top eight. Chen finished 12th out of the 12 after his injuries picked up in the competition, and Eduardo Uceda in sixth place has now withdrawn from the rest of the competition. Well, one man who hasn't withdrawn and is still going strong is this man, Ronan Pallier. He's in fifth position. A season best of 6.01 with his third jump. The man who took bronze in Tokyo 2020 calls for silence. And that looked dubiously close to the edge of the board and is given a red flag. So a foul there for Ronan Pallier in his fifth attempt He'll remain in fifth position, the Frenchman. 6.01 is best still to date. He'll have one last opportunity as well. In the men's shot we have three final, left to go after this Pallier jump. You can just see there he went awfully close to the front of that board and he did go across the line. There it is there. Not too much in it. 10 or 15 centimetres, but... That's certainly enough. This will show it brilliantly. Yeah, that you see him brilliantly. Even with the guy's legs there, you can see that he blatantly went well across that line. So a bit of homework to do with his coaching staff. You can see the disappointment hand on head and really upset with himself. This man's not upset with himself though. Yi Tao. Well, that's not too bad at all. 627 is his lifetime best as a season best as well for the man from China 25 years of age what's interesting to watch here is the contrast in terms of the technique once they've taken off the board we saw Pallier do what almost looks like a continuation of his running in the air whereas Tao Yi uses a bit more of a simple hang technique, both equally effective. All that matters is that you are able to maintain your balance in the air and not rotate too far forward. Incredibly hard and requiring an incredible amount of body awareness, especially when you can't use the pit or any other visual cue. Yeah, some almost jump like they're riding a skateboard and they move to the side and sort of slide down that way. But well, 6.25 for Yi Tao puts him up into the gold medal position. What a turnaround. So he's gone from third to first. This man here was in second position. Martinez, he now has dropped down to bronze. Well, that, you can see on the board on the far side, it's well out over the six meter mark. Sometimes that can be deceptive because of where they jump on the board. From the we eye, it actually looks like he jumped quite far back on the board. So this could be another big jump in the fifth round. Well, his season best he's jumped so far was his second, which was 6.15. This one here is around the six metre mark. Whether it's going to be enough to put him into the lead or not. Six metres and four. The answer you may have heard in the background. We'll get confirmation in a moment, but six metres and four centimetres. So he doesn't improve and stays in third possession despite that season best, which has him in the bronze medal position. And Di Dong Dong is one centimetre shy of his compatriot, Yi Tao. He has some work to do in a moment or two's time. Well, it's taken a bit of time, this... T11 long jump. This man's led for a lot of it. He's now trying to get it back. Oh, that looks massive. 
That looks huge, and he, he jumped from well back on the board as well, so he's going to gain a bit of extra then. Well, he's got one centimetre to make up. Does D Dong Dong, and he looked like a man possessed them when he ran through, and he jumped from near the back of the board. And that looks like it's going to put him back into first position. Well, the man who won bronze in 2019 in Dubai, the reigning Paralympic champion, he won para Asian gold in 2018. And that was a decent jump. The technique then was perfect. It was a very strong run. He was so central on the runway, lost absolutely no momentum to the side. Great leg shoot, great height. Sometimes you just need that extra little push from someone who just knocks you down a place. Or well, D Dong Dong His teammate, has donged the bell. He's back in first place. Six meters 38, a season best jump for the man from China who's gone back past his compatriot Yi Tao by 13 centimeters. With one jump left to go, and this man here hasn't had any luck in Paralympic Games. He's had plenty of luck in World Championships, not so at these ones. He was about to jump, Lex Gillette. He's been moved aside. And Kachyev, the Ukrainian, has been moved into position instead. Yeah, the changing order now changes for the uh, final round, which is a, a reasonably recent innovation. Gillette traditionally would have uh, kept the eighth spot going into the final round, which he's going to have to wait to do. But he's currently in seventh spot, and he's around uh, 35 centimeters off the medals right now. So Kachev in eighth position. He'll jump first on the final jump. Has a lot of work to do, and he's been pulled up by his guide. Just lost his way somewhat there, heading towards the board to jump. So he'll be taken back. The clock still stopped on 45 seconds. And he'll have time to reassess, reevaluate, and retry. It's interesting to see that actually his guide positions herself halfway down the runway instead of right in front of the foul line. So what you're looking at right now, you'll see a lot of markers on either side of the runway. This is the measurements of the athletes. Consistency really, really matters in the run up. And so they'll have measured it in practice, uh, in training. They'll measure it when they come out. That's one of the first things that they do. They actually come out about half an hour before the event starts because you have to set this mark. Well, Kachev will go from the yellow marker. He's taken about five or six metres and he's stopped again. And he looks distraught as well. He was certainly heading straight. He's used up 16 seconds of that clock, so there was 45 seconds remaining. He now has 29 seconds. So it may be on this one, jump or bust. This is hard. This is a final round. You're having to resettle twice. You've used a little bit of energy, perhaps had a little bit of the confidence sapped. He's really going to have to refocus and remember the cues that his guide has just given him. Well, that's fine. There's nothing the matter with that one. A decent enough distance up towards that six meter mark you see there on the far side, but he did jump actually from a little bit back on the board. So this may well be his best attempt. As he thanks the crowd. No medals today for Ruslan Kachev, but got himself into that final eight. And he'll finish in that eighth position. It does appear, although that one looked pretty good. 578 is his best. That one there doesn't improve on it though. 556 for his final jump. So men's shot put F55 seated category.
we are watching Rujdi Rujdi. The man who's won the last three world titles in this. Dethroned as Paralympic champion by Wallace Santos. That is a brilliant attempt by Rujdi for Bulgaria. How good is it though? Santos the world record holder. 12.63 from Tokyo two years ago in taking Paralympic glory. Rushdie, tentative. A brilliant throw, a new world record, and he's on the way to gold. Rushdie leading. 12.68, that new world record for Bulgaria. Stockman of Poland in second, 12.27. Wallace Santos currently bronze for Brazil, 11.87. But there's still a couple of throwers left to go. Wallace Santos, though, the Paralympic champion, will not be world champion here. We still have Musiev and Vergovicius to throw in this men's shot put decider. And it's not over yet, and neither is the men's long jump. Katyshev, you just saw going 5.56. Five uh, no improvement for Lex Gillette. 5.81. You say that is not going. He's retired from the competition, so he does finish sixth. Gillette, seventh. Katyshev, eighth. The top five remain. Did you catch her on that final jump? A lot of the other athletes and their coaches, there's a clap, sometimes there's a counting. His guide, Wesley, actually yells out, fly, 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 fly. The story of Roman Pallier, who we'll be seeing in a few moments, is, is quite something. 53 years old, he'll turn this year. He is the reigning European champion now, European champion for the first time. His first medal is coming in the old 4 by one relay back in Beijing 2008. And he's only 14 centimetres off the medals right now, so it is 6.01. With his third attempt, he had a foul in round five. Well, from the old on the track to the young French supporters off it. Maybe dreaming of being an athlete one day themselves. Not so much him, her. Pallet is not bad in his own right. Paralympic bronze his first individual Paralympic medal coming in Tokyo. A brilliant effort in finishing in third spot just a couple of months after winning the European title for the first time. So here he comes, aiming beyond six metres, just as long as he didn't go beyond the chalk. It is a red flag, though, and Pallier is denied a medal this time at the Worlds. He's given it a great tilt. He went out towards six metres, but his last two attempts have been red flags. If only there'd been a bit of blue and white to go with it. But Pallier will finish in fifth spot. A great effort, a brilliant attempt. He doesn't win a medal in Paris this year, but maybe, just maybe, next year. Well, he certainly is a fan favorite, and he did exactly what he should have done. He's in the sixth round. He's sitting in fifth place. That is when you just have to go for it. And sometimes with that little extra injection of speed, you end up running a bit farther, covering a bit more distance that, than you expected. But at least he'll leave knowing that he, he went for that final jump. Well, maybe a bit of that chalk's beginning to drift a bit. But certainly with the naked eye, for me, from where we are just beyond the finish line, it looked a clear foul, just beyond the edge as the last effort comes in from Egem Nazarov. Now he is 6.06, he is currently 10 centimetres off the top three. He gets the white flag for that. Championship debutant at the age of 23, he's got the Asian Para Games to come up as well. Has he managed to do it? He might have a real good reason to six phone home shortly. I think he just pulled out of that towards the end. It's a lifetime best from as well at 6.06. .06. Worth pointing that out. 5.53 going into it. He's broken his lifetime best 
four times already today. The other one was a foul. Has this one edged them up towards the medals? Not quite. Five meters 94. And Egem Nazarov for Uzbekistan stays in fourth place. So the medals are going to China and to Spain, but in what order? Juan Muna Martinez, former European champion on the track in the 400 meters in Grosseto in 2016. He's got a big tilt at world glory here. Former 200 silver, 100 bronze. London 2017, he's the third last to go, and if he can increase by 11 centimeters, he's into the top two. Currently bronze medalist. So he's on his way, is it to glory? Well that's quite big, and he's jumped from quite a distance back on the board as well. The jump itself looked pretty good. The distance is what we're going to call into question because he has some to make up. 11 centimeters to go past Yi Tao into a silver medal position. 34 centimeters if he's to get up to Di Dong Dong, who's in the gold medal position. But the actual run and jump itself Look pretty good. It was good. It was a solid run right down the center, carried all of his speed with him into the takeoff. Great leg shoots. Not losing any unnecessary distance on the landing. I mean, he's done. He's done everything he can. Well, he got plenty of distance. He got plenty of height. He's finished with 6.15, the same as his second jump, which is a season best. So he takes the bronze medal, does Juan Muna Martinez of Spain. Now it's a case of seeing who takes gold and silver. At the moment, this man here, Yi Tao, with 6.25, is in the silver medal position. But that can be deceptive, although it looks like it's just around the 7 metre mark. It can be deceptive because of where it's measured from and where the measurement starts on that far side with a board that shows you those numbers across that far side of the pit. And this will have been a roller coaster of a competition for him. At one point, he found himself in the lead. And it's quite interesting. He actually has one of the shortest run ups of all the competitors. As I counted, only about 12 strides, which means that there is still potentially more speed to be found on the runway. And for for Yi Tao of China. Well, his lifetime best is a season best, which was set this year. It was 6.27, so two centimetres further. He'd have to go a lot further for his lifetime best if he's to get the gold medal. He doesn't. 6.18 for his last jump. So it's confirmed that Yi Tao has picked up a silver medal and Di Dong Dong of China will make it a Chinese 1-2 as he takes the gold. One to add to his Paralympic gold medal from Tokyo 2020. He'll become the Paralympic and world champion. Now, he actually doesn't need to take this jump to win, and it's always a really difficult mindset for the athlete. You've known you've won, but sometimes you want a little bit extra. I was just about to say, after what we saw at the beginning of the competition with his compatriot Chen, who injured himself, do you want to take the risk at the end when you've already got the gold medal? But hey, glory awaits, D Dong Dong. And that's a very good jump to finish with. And it's a beautiful... I suspect he, he knew that he really found his rhythm and his stride on that fifth jump. And when you're feeling it, and when you have a crowd as great as this one, sometimes you do have to take your moment when it comes. Yeah, no, no pressure. It's all relieved after knowing that he's already picked up the gold medal. Jump as you please. If you foul, so be it. He didn't do that, which means that all six of his jumps are legal. He's pushed the boundaries. He's taken the gold. He hasn't improved, though, so 6.38 his best. 6.34 in his final jump. So Di Dong Dong, though, confirmed as... 
the world champion to go with his Paralympic gold from Tokyo 2020. He has the double. With an excellent final effort, just four centimeters down from the best of this competition. And I think what is most impressive there is his consistency. He knows that when the pressure's on, and he had the pressure on him, he can respond and he can get a big jump. What a great shot there of the height that he got. Well, the space, of, the space of just a couple of minutes when he lost that gold medal position to going back to the gold medal position, it just shows that mentally he had what it takes to go with the physical as well. Exactly. In, in an event like this that takes place over quite a long time, we know anything can happen. They had a few interruptions. You have to be able to maintain that headspace and that composure for a long period of time. Yeah, it's a good point. At 6.30, this competition was due to get underway. It took a little while. It's now 9.24 local time, so it's taken almost three hours to conclude what would normally take a couple of hours. Yeah, Ti Dong Dong is the Asian Para Games champion as well, a title to defend in China later on this year. So he has all the titles now, and you have to praise Ye Tao as well. Major championship debut for him in picking up a silver medal, and he was 13 centimeters away from the gold in the end. China won two, but maybe not quite the personnel that we would have expected because of Chen's big problem just beforehand, and he finished in 12th spot. To have his warm-up warm -up attempt, six throws to try to reach the podium of this uh, Parathletics World Championship Paris 2023. The bronze medal was at 11 meter 87. So China in a great position ahead of the Asian Para Games in Hangzhou. And the gold is at 12 towards the end. 68, the new world so Di Dong Dong, a season best gold medal to add to his Asian Para Games gold and also his Paralympic gold. 6.38, Yi Tao makes the Chinese 1 2, taking the silver in 6.25. And Muna Martinez of Spain, a season best with him, 6.15 for the bronze. A great success for China getting the one and two there and Chen so so unlucky at the start of this competition in running into an equipment box as he feared off course during his practice jumps it may have been it surely would have been for him a different story and had it been a different story for him China could have done the clean sweep we haven't had a clean sweep yet, have we? Nope. Well, it's early days. It's the first full day of proper competition. But China is such a strong nation in this. They, and we consider what Chen has won previously in terms of major championship medals. Yay would have been they're uh, the wild card candidate if you like it's a lovely evening we still have one attempt to, to go in the men's shot put final in the f55 the seated competition rushdi with that world record for bulgaria 12 meters 68 next stopman in second place for poland 12 27 a new lifetime best for him and wallace santos the paralympic champion for brazil he's currently in third spot with 11 87 and he is the one whose position is tentative with that just final attempt to go. So Verbevicius of Lithuania, the last one to go. 10.83 is his lifetime best, which would only be good enough for eight. So he needs to add a bit onto this in order to basically add just over a meter on with his six attempts. We'll see what kind of form he is in to wrap up the competition in this shot put. Our first meter line I take to be 10 meters. It's a practice throws for him at the moment. He is 37 years old. Donc, 
Justement, en parlant du lancer, il est interdit de décoller le bassin du siège. Takes a little bit of time for each of the athletes to get settled into the throwing circle. Each athlete is given a set amount of time to position and take their throws within a four minutes, and now he is ready to go with his first throw. So Ramunus Verbevicius. Well, he's got to be on the 10 meter line. It's heading towards 11. Finished ninth in the shot put final at the last World Championships in Dubai in 2019. Fifth in the javelin. He's got that as well, Kamit as well. That was in London in 2017. And sixth in Doha in the javelin. It's the beginning of the attempt for Ramunas. And that a foul with his first attempt. And his first attempt will be a foul. Oh, it's 1060 actually, it's come up there. Because on the uh, result system, it came up as a foul. Second attempt. That's well, looking for the from again Nicolai around 1060, I have to say. In event where there has been a this is live, so we're not looking into the future. It's come up as a foul again in the commentary system but I'm pretty sure that was a white flag Tulsa wasn't it so yeah there was definitely a white flag that was given by the official to Verba Vicious now he's asking the question here and saying what's going on it was a white flag definitely given on the second mark there so there's obviously a bit of an issue here they've miscounted so on the system now the first two have come up as fouls then 1063 so what he and we presume to be practice throws They've come up as fouls. I'm not sure that's correct. He has had a couple of throws around 1060. Well, he's, he's looking a bit fed up as well, he, isn't he? He definitely had his practice throws beforehand because the clock stopped and went to the one minute mark after he'd finished his four minute warm up. They spoke to him, the officials. He gave them the nod that he was ready to go. You clearly saw that. And then they gave him the shot put. As soon as they put the shot put in his hand, the clock started counting down from one minute for his first throw. Now, I couldn't see the flag on the first one, but I can definitely tell you it was a white flag for his second attempt. So 10.63 has now come up for the last two attempts that he's done, which looks right to me. So there was a uh, computer error. That's been rectified. So he's got up into eighth position. This is very close to his lifetime best of 10.83. His season's best ahead of this was 10.43, but he's gone past that now. So basically he needs to add another metre and a quarter if he can squeeze out a massive lifetime best. That is what will get him into the medals. And yes, they've completely corrected it now because this is apparently going to be his third attempt. So the, uh, the first two marks, which were originally down as fouls, were, as we had seen at the time, practice throws. So it's taken a while for the computer to catch up. So this is his third attempt now. We're going to get that up beyond 10 meters again. He's had a long wait. That's the nature of it. He's been out there for three hours, but thankfully it's been a nice, clement evening. Or soiree clement. 1082, season's best. He's making nice progress here. One centimeter well, supported definitely, they are uh, ace when it comes to the throwing events in this. So this is where he's able to take his, his midway break. He's now had his three official throws and they've made it clear to him that he's had his three official throws. So he's in eight spot there. He's got a bit of a way to go, but this is knocking around lifetime best territory for him now. I was just going to say, he's just composing himself. The athletes in these seated throws, unlike in the other field events, they take all of their attempts in a row. And part of it is just because of 
the challenges around having to get into and, and out of the chair and, and just the time that it takes. And so they're giving the athletes a little bit of a break halfway through. You can see there all of the shot putts lined up. The athlete can choose any one that he wants. They are all four kilograms. They are all regulation, but he seems to have a particular fondness for the yellow one, perhaps because it matches his jersey. One of the national colors of Lithuania, after all. So Verba Vicious. Now that looks slightly improved, but would only be slightly. 10.83. His lifetime best. He's come within a, a centimetre of that with his uh, third round attempt. And this is it. All the focus of the stadium is on him. He's the last competitor in the last event to wrap up. He's got a good bit of consistency going now. That was 10.77. We can tell you verbally. For his fourth attempt, this is his fifth, and that seems a bit shorter to me. So he's might have just hit his peak in the third round. That's gone down as a foul anyway. So one more attempt to go. In this F55 final. Former swimmer, Verba Vicious. So a multi-talented athlete. Great close-up of the, the technique there. When, when you can't use your legs to put the power into the shot, you can see how he's leaning back with his whole torso and then launching himself forward, getting a little bit of velocity before he puts it, all in an attempt to get as much distance out of the throw. Well, he's put his effort in, and it was the, uh, the middle section of his six throws where his peak came. He finishes in eight spot, 10 meters, 82. It's generally been around the area in which he's been finishing in recent finals. He'd have preferred a bit more. He came one centimeter away from a lifetime best. That might have been the main target for him tonight. But he finishes eighth, breaking through the 11 meter mark. Would have only gained him a one spot higher in seventh place. So Rushdi, Rushdi of Bulgaria takes the gold. A new world record for him too of 12.68 to rest back the mark that Wallace Santos had taken off him to take Paralympic gold in Tokyo two years ago. So Wallace Santos gets the bronze medal for Brazil. 11.87 is final attempt. He had the lead for a good bit tonight. Lex Stoltman of Poland. The seventh to go, his first attempt, 12.27, put him into the lead. But silver for him in the end because Rushdie Rushdie, yet again, so good, they named him twice. World record, 12.68, just like clockwork. Takes the gold for Bulgaria and he is the world champion for a fourth time. Yes, great performances by our athletes. For instance, the men's 1500 T52. The Japanese athlete Sato Tomoki performed a championship. Nice performance from Stoltman as well. Lifetime best for him by five centimeters to take the silver medal. 12 meters 27. Managed also a championship record with 27 meters. And the Paralympic champion, Wallace Santos, loses the world record, but picks up a world championship bronze, for which he is very pleased. Excellent result for him. And despite a reversal of the Paralympic result, he's still got a lot to be happy about. Rusty Rusty takes the gold for Bulgaria. Four time world champion now. He gets the world record back. 12 meters 68. Lex Stoltman, the silver for Poland. Wallace Santos, the bronze for Brazil. Yes, tomorrow morning, eight finals. Please remember that the gates will open at 8 a.m. And a big surprise tomorrow night with a set a show from the Avenue.
On trouverait The Avenger pour euh, son show et le euh, DJ set. Sachez que le stade Charletti ferme ses portes. On était ravis de vous accueillir ce soir. Rendez-vous demain euh, pour euh, les finales au programme de la session euh, du matin et toutes les épreuves pour cette euh, deuxième journée des champions. Well, Priscilla, one of the nations that are. Uh... 2023. Bonne soirée à toutes et à tous. Top of the pile when it comes to talent spotting. And see you tomorrow. So it's been a lovely evening at the Stade Charlotte. And hey, we're back for more in just over 11 hours' time for the morning session of day three. But it has been, again, quite a wonderful day of oh, tremendous champions being crowned. Rosa Kusakowska taking the women's club throw. Championship record 27-29. Mara Ibrahimi, the silver for Tunisia. Ubram, the bronze for Morocco. Kusakowska, gold for Poland. New championship record as well at F31 for Hin Friwa for Morocco, but ninth for her. Munia Gazmi would have been one of the favourites, didn't register a mark. Men's job put F55, set in category, world record for Rushdie Rushdie, 1268, world champion yet again. Lex Stoltman, lifetime best of 1227 with the silver, and Wallace Santos picks up the bronze medal. 11.87 for him, just ahead of Musiev. So Amiri in seventh position. Verba Vicious, consistent with his throws. Season best for him, 10.82 in eighth position, all the way down to Yadav of India with 9.29. In the F11, men's long jump, China 1 and 2. Di Dong Dong taking the glory, 6.38. He left it late. Ye Tao, the silver for China, 6.25. Juan Munar with the bronze for Spain, 6 metres 15. A real thriller of a final, that. And Chen, unfortunately for him, provide a lot of those thrills with that big bump in the warm-up. And he finishes in 13th place. He would have been a favourite for a place in the podium. Jaden Blackwell, excellent victory for him. A new championship record of the men's 100 metres, T38. Coordination impairment. He goes through to the final along with Santiago Solis of Colombia and Thomas Young of Great Britain with Ryan Medrano also making it through for the USA. Evan O'Hanlon, who did hold the championship record prior to the first heat, had to settle for a qualification spot in third. Nick Mayhew in second position. And Zhu Denning, a season best for him, with Joszwitzki of France also qualifying. In the T37 100 metres... Saptioga Purnoma, the fastest in that for Indonesia. Championship record, 11.42. Christian Luis da Costa and Vladislav Jarabelny also progressing. Well, it all happened in the second one as well because that championship record from Heat 1 was broken by Ricardo Gomez in Heat 2. Kokowski also qualifying along with Joe Smith of New Zealand automatically. What a great triumph for Gavin Drysdale of Air Scotland and Great Britain. A new European record, 16.66 to win the men's 100 metres. T72, the frame running. Rafi Salaiman, the silver for Britain, 16.78. Uh, and Vinicius Marquez of Brazil, the bronze. Britain 1 and 2, Brazil in third. Maria Strong, lifetime best for her of 
52 years of age, she picks up a Paralympic gold to add to her shot put bronze from Paralympics in Tokyo 2020. Andra Skret uh, Gigowicz of Poland with a new European record, 18.20, and Tortosa Vila, a lifetime best, 18.90, picking up a bronze. Adi Iglesias, the Paralympic champion with victory in the women's 100 meters T13, opening heat 12.34. Very impressive. Big margin of victory over Ryan Suarez of Brazil. Lamia Valieva, a championship record in qualification, 11.89 for her. Bianca Borgella at her first major championships, the Canadian lifetime best for her. Orla Comerford goes through, as does Melissa Calvert, as a qualifier. Women's 400 meters, T11, complete visual impairment. And Julia Carol de Santos rolling back the years, going through automatically a minute point two oh. Lu Ku Jing, the reigning champion, second. But she goes through, as does Joanna Mazur. Salcedo went through in first place in this one. Regina Dumbo had finished in second position, but she was disqualified and misses out on qualification altogether. Victory for Laha Ishitile as well of Namibia, qualifying along with Angie Pabon of Colombia into the semi finals. And a new continental record for her as well. Salida Simplicio. Qualified in a time of 1 minute 0.26. The lady who took silver in Tokyo 2020 and silver in the 200 metres there as well. Sato taking the men's 1500 metres T52. The second most impaired of the wheelchair racing category. Sato the girl. Gare Speckler the bronze for Austria. And Kurtanasiri taking third place for Thailand. Gary Spickler, the silver, and Sato, the gold. Well, the opening men's 5,000 metres T54, an event which promises so much. Daniel Sibri of Great Britain leaving his movement until the end, went through his first. Julian Cassidy went through second. And it was Singlam who went through as well. Marcel Hoog, championship record, winning his heat of the 5,000 metres. 1019.11 is looking for a hot decider in that. And maybe for tomorrow and day three, hot times in Paris as well. But it's been uh, a lot more clement this evening, which has been quite welcome, I would say, for spectators, athletes, officials, and commentators alike. Portuguese team are coming in. So Tunisia are the first nation to take two titles at these world championships. Great glory for uh, Uzbekistan as well. They've uh, picked up four medals today and Colombia as well. Poland, great success in the club throw, obviously. China could have done that clean sweep in the uh, T11 men's long jump. But there are bronze coming from elsewhere. Gold and silver for Great Britain in the T72. A strong performance as well for Australia. Gold for them and Mexico too. Brazil with three medals in the opening day. Spain with 2-1. Muna Martinez in that long jump. Wrapping it up. And uh, Diana X Dadzite with the bronze for Latvia coming this morning. So it's been a day of highs and lows. We had the heat leading into this championship start. It's been a little bit cooler today. There have been championship records already. There have been world records, lifetime bests and season bests. Expect it to continue on the second day. We look forward to your company for myself, Tolson Tollett, Will Downing and Steph Reed. Bye for now.